great scene here today in Boulder, Colorado. But you know, Nebraska is a heavy favorite. Colorado's optimistic. Are they equipped to handle the Huskers? Uh, Brent, I think so for two reasons. First of all, uh, Nebraska's played all their big games at home. Oklahoma at home. This is the first team as a road game that feels they can beat them, and I think that's big. Anything special for number seven, Mr. Crouch? When you play Nebraska, you're facing Eric Crouch. He's the one guy in college football that can beat you anywhere on the field, any formation, whether he runs, pitches, or passes, or as we've seen, catch it. They may jab you with a pass game. They may jab you with a tailback, but the knockout punch is Eric Crouch. Let's go down now to Jack Arudu's coach, Frank Solich of Nebraska. Well, Brent, four of the last six times that this team has been here on the sidelines, on the first offensive play, they've scored. As we run out with Coach Frank Solich, Coach, what's the first play going to be? Well, uh, it's not going to be too exciting because there's going to be a bunch of plays after that. Uh, but we're, we're going to try to have a, a fake taking them one way and come back the other way with a play that we hope has a chance to get some yards. Jack. Good luck, Coach. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Brent. Nice try, Jack. <laughs> that was wonderful. Gary Barnett. His third year at Colorado, trying to return to dominance. A sellout, and I do mean a packed house. And yes, there is a lot of red. Nebraska fans did find a way to get tickets to this one. Colorado won the toss. They have deferred. Nebraska will handle the ball right away. And can they do it again? Can they score on their first play from scrimmage? Pat Braun, number 25, will kick it off. And awaiting it is another 25. That, of course, is Josh Davis, who needs only six return yards to set the all-time Nebraska single-season record. As Crouch, ready on the sideline, will come hustling out for their first play. bring it out yes he will the record is his the all-time kick return leader but they're short of the 20 now Jack Aroot told you that four of the last six games in Boulder Nebraska has struck on the first play from scrimmage two years ago it's Danny Alexander on the pitch got the corner 50 yards touchdown Nebraska keep this in mind Colorado is focused on number seven today, Eric Crouch. In the past, the Huskers have pitched it. I can remember Amon Green catching the corner for a touchdown, too, here in Boulder. Thunder Collins in motion. Fake and Crouch keeps it. Rolls. They won't score this time because number 54, Sean Tufts out of Englewood, Colorado. In that offensive line, Mr. Pancake, you got served for number 77, Fonity, All-American at left guard. Darren Diedrich, folks, we talk so much about Crouch. We overlook number 30, 1,000-yard rusher, leads the Big 12, certainly underrated. But the key man is number 7. Colorado determined to get the ball out of his hands as much as possible. Second down and 14. Straight ahead, 30, big hole, and he pounds it. To the 22, and Michael Lewis, their great safety, makes the hit. Justin Bannon, a question about his health. How many snaps can he go? The defensive tackle spot, there was a big hole on that last play. The linebackers, they've got a crunch crouch all day long. That's their mission. We mentioned number 31. He's one of the best in the country, Michael Lewis. They'll move him up tight. Pay eight men up in that box all day long, looking for the run on third and four. Wish them a motion right. Crouch looks in that direction. Crouch goes downfield, incomplete. Wanted Thomas, three and out. 84% of Nebraska's passes go to four people. They're tight end, they're two tight white starting receivers and Thunder Collins. Colorado has a bead on who Crouch wants to throw the ball to. Stop the option on first play, and all of a sudden it's punt time. And now Roman Hollowell. The nation's leader. There is Garrison, number 52. Had a bad snap against Kansas State. Colorado wants him to look left. They want him to block left all day. They picked up a tendency. Larson gets this one off, and now it's Hollowell, the nation's leader. He's at the 21-yard line. Gross can't get to it. He slips the first man. Runs laterally out to the 32-yard line, and the 
Nebraska with good coverage on that. Hollowell is so tricky and dangerous now. And folks, two great offensive linemen, Gerard and Rogers, lead the way. They are definitely in charge of this large offensive line. Daniel Graham, a first round draft choice for sure, number 89. The man under the gun is number four, Bobby Pesavento, the senior who transferred here from Miami of Ohio with Craig Oaks injured, moved back in the starting lineup. He's turned in several outstanding games. Straight eye, Corlin Johnson's 27. He's the guy back the first carry. About three yards to the 35-yard line against this Husker defensive lineup. Chris Kelsey coming on. Colorado thinks he's the key man in that defensive front. As far as the linebackers are concerned, Jamie Burrow has become the hitman, number 48. A terrific Second secondary. They will play man to man, but can they block number 57? That will be the key. Kelsey gets down in his stance. Play fake, Pesavino on the roll. He'll swing it sideline. Got a sideline. Incomplete. Out of bounds. And they were using Hollowell down the sideline as the receiver. Pesavento. Pesavento in his last three game starters with an injured Craig Oaks is completing 71% of his passes as a starter. Graham is the trailer, but he goes deep and the ball is just let out of bounds. Colorado believes to throw the ball, the quarterback is going to have to move out of the pocket occasionally to avoid that pass rush. Bates is lined up against Kelsey. It's third down for Colorado. The slot receiver in the California passing attack. They break it wide open, complete to the 40 yard line. They hit number 15, Matt Brunson, the senior from Inglewood, for 26 yards. Pesavento had time to throw the ball. When you have time, that means your running back is blocking on a blitz. Nebraska comes with the blitz, and this time, bang! Running back comes in there, makes the play. Bobby Purify makes it, and that's what allows Pesavento to throw the ball downfield. What we noticed about this Colorado team all week is the quiet confidence. The coaches and the players, they believe coming in. And it's Purify for a touchdown. Purify breaks open. He slowed up too early and got hit by Gross. When he slowed up, he was risking it, but he goes in for the touchdown, and it is six nothing. Colorado purified bolts 39 yards. It was almost like he thought the goal line was the two yard line. You said the two guys, Gerard and Rogers. Those are the two guys that get the block. Brent, I think he was so open, he believed the whistle blew. He said, "I can't be this open." He turns around and says, "What's going on here?" Now the extra point and the seven point advantage. Jeremy Flores, the senior, adds the extra point. And we got a surprise for you. Nebraska comes in favored by 10 points. And the Buffaloes say, forget about it. We're going to be in this one all the way. And it was the handoff here to their number two back in the rotation. They go four deep at running back. Here's number two, the sensational Purify. It's seven nothing. Ready to add to that record, but Brown may have different ideas. Remember, Davis gambled and didn't get back to the 20 yard line. He hangs another one beautifully right down by the goal line, about three yards in, and Davis is coming out. And he's well short again. Hey, Brome has been a key to this game. Two terrific kickoffs. Killian makes the stop. Now, number seven. How good has he been as the Nebraska quarterback? Folks, look at this. Since 99. This is 50% of their touchdowns. Rushed or passed for 76. This is why he could well be considered the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. This is a young man who has done it all in his four years, lost only five times. And now it's all uphill for Nebraska. They have not scored in the first quarter for about three straight games now. Play fake. Crunch's gonna go for Wistrom, cover incomplete, and Lewis was stuck at him one-on-one, -on -one, and Lewis gave him no daylight, Gary. And Wistrom is very upset.
upset that Lewis was not called for holding on that play. Turned around, motioned to the referee that he was grabbing the whole way, but it ain't holding if there's no yellow flag. Coaches talk about Lewis as the emotional player of this defense and also say in the next sentence that he's the smartest football player on this team. He's going to have Crouch and Wistrom all game. They have forced Nebraska to spread the field early. And now they're going to run Diedrich to the middle of that defensive line. Fumble! Loose ball still. Dive for it! The Buffaloes think they've got it! A tug of war. This would be huge if Colorado pulls it away underneath. Still no signal. Yes, Colorado's got it. Power play right up the gut. Dietrich, both hands on the ball for a while. Gets hit once, gets hit twice, and then right at the end of the play, that's a clean fumble. And it comes out, and Colorado's quicker to the ball. Fonote tries to get there, but he doesn't get it. Now, Colorado at the 21-yard line for Barnett. We'll see what the game plan is coming in here. They've got a power back. They come back with Purify. Remember now, in Gerard and Rogers, 71 and 65, they've got two monsters in that offensive line. Terrific football. They're going to put it up on first down. They're going to go for the juggler. Touchdown. Tight end. The tight end. Daniel Graham. Colorado strikes on a 21 yard touchdown pass. Solely to the Huskers are in deep trouble. Top of the corner right here. He's got Willie Amos on the corner route right there. The safety has a man to man. Nebraska blitzing again, beautiful route, better throw, and Amos gets beat to the corner, and Pesavetto again right there. Matt Flores pounds in the extra point. Folks, we haven't played five minutes. We're not five minutes into this game. And Colorado leads it by 14. And it was the fumble. Diedrich up the middle, gets stripped by Strickland. It pops free. I'm not sure if it was Sneed. Sneed. Yes, Pounced Sneed. on the ball. Sneed, Sneed, Sneed. The guy. And here's the touchdown. Remember, he'll be the first tight end drafted, according to Gary Barnett. And there you can see why. A big timer into the end zone, and it's 14-0 Colorado. There's 142 years of coaching experience on Solich's staff. They will not panic. And again, Chrome drives this one through the end zone. Let's take a look at what's going to decide this football game. Two teams, two even teams. Colorado believes they can win it. Both teams want to run the power game in this football game. Whoever does it the best is going to have a chance. You saw Purify already. Special teams breakdowns. Nebraska already gotten beat twice on the kickoff. And Nebraska needs to save fuel for the fourth. In the fourth quarter here in Colorado, they've been outscored the last two years, 38 to nothing. Thunder Collins checks into the backfield. Number one is the eyeback. After the deep break fumble, it'll be Collins. And it's the fullback straight ahead of Jeff Davies. So now what Nebraska will do, and they're so good at it, they're so patient. This offensive line will block so well. They need to think just one at a time here against Colorado. There's so much emotion right now in this crowd. It is electric down there. That's where you get in trouble when you're playing, trying to play football against Nebraska. Everybody says assignment football, assignment football. Try to play the quarterback, but you have to stop the power game first. Eye formation with Collins play fake and Crouch is going to throw on the run. Incomplete. Under through Thomas a little bit. And, and, and reminded that tomorrow, to ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens features two stellar games in prime time. Gary, look at this. Eight Eastern. We've got the rematch. Washington against Miami. And of course, Washington beat Miami last year. Some of you will see the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame take on Stanford. What's your thoughts, Gary, about Washington, Miami? Uh, Miami, I think they're the best football team in college, in college football. A 
not so fast, my friend. <laughs> this one's not yet over. Third down in the Huskers. Here's that option looking crouch. No first down. Great play by Joey Johnson, the hot linebacker from San Antonio, Texas. Joey Johnson playing for Sykes, their injured middle linebacker. He's coming on. Crouch cannot get outside with the option. Davies is going to try to get outside and block, but he gets knocked off inside, and that allows Johnson to scrape and make the play. Now, again, they're going to make Garrison. They're going to put someone right on him. Last time they went and returned. This time it looks a little different alignment for Colorado. Here they come. Larson, the punt man. Coming in. Here's Holloway. He's going to be out of bounds. Hollowell is out of bounds when he caught the ball. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. General Motors, together, let's keep America rolling. Burger King, home of the Whopper. And Sears, only Sears has the brand you want, the price you need. Sears, where else? How about Nebraska? They haven't scored in the first quarter in the last three games, and Colorado's got them on the run in this football game. Those 142 years of experience, they're going to need it in this football game. <laughs> it certainly looks that way. Purify still in at running back. After his bolt for the first touchdown of the game. Here he is on a little delay, sealed up by the Husker defense right now. We've got an injury. Let's check in now with Jack Aru. Brent, you may see more of this man, Bobby Purify, because Cortland Johnson, who has really been the hoss in the rotation for Colorado, has suffered a strained MCL. They are working on it now. They have listed him as doubtful, but he wants to get back in the game and at least get a few snaps. He has never beaten Nebraska. He's one of the seniors, Johnson is. And of course, that's why Purify was on the field when he bolted for the touchdown. Thanks to play fake Pesavano. Kelsey's got him, and it was a whistle. Whistle on the player, obviously, prior to the snap as they stopped it. The snap occurred. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains second so down. So, Bobby Pesavento, we'll call him the Marco. Polo of quarterbacks. I'll steal a Dick Vitale line. And look at this out of Lake Central High School in Indiana, on to Oxford, to Miami of Ohio. Then he went to a junior college at Fort Scott, Kansas. Then here to Boulder, thought he was going to start under the bench. And now he has come back because of the injury suffered by Craig Oaks, and he has been efficient. And he's kept himself ready when he got his chance. So nice to see a youngster who does not give up. Never, ever give up. Second down. Here's Purify. Penalty flag, penalty flag, purify, and a foot race for the end zone. But let me reiterate, the umpire threw the penalty flag. Frequently, that's holding. And this one is going to come back. Brent, that might have been holding on the defensive line, but where are the Nebraska linebackers? That's two sprints holding to the end zone. On the no, was on the offensive line. yard penalty enforcement, spot of the foul, and main second down. I mean, they're going to get holding inside here. But where are the guys back here, the linebackers? What is happening to the flow? Vidrell and Burr just running right by. Kelsey goes too deep for Pesavento, and look at that. Holy cow. You know, I talked to a coach in the Big 12 earlier this morning, and I said, you know, Coach, being here, it seems to me that maybe Colorado matches up a little bit better against Nebraska. And he said, absolutely, this is going to be the toughest game of the year because of the style that Barnett has. He will run directly at Nebraska, and they will block it, and they will use short passes to keep Solich and the Huskers honest. He said, I think Nebraska's in for a dogfight up there. And the play-action pass. When you can run the play-action pass, and that's what Pesavento's done to buy some time. Slot to the left. Three wide on second and long after the holding nullified the touchdown. And there's our hole again. And out to the 24-yard line, Chris Brown, who transferred from Northwestern, the third running back. And here at Folsom Field on an overcast Saturday afternoon. And here is the first touchdown of the game. Bobby Purify off the bench, took it home. Then Nebraska turned it over, a Diedrich fumble. And after that, it was the Huskers' great tight end, Graham from Pesavento, and it's 14-0.
Nebraska linebackers, Jamie Burrow is overrunning the play. Colorado is cutting back and getting yards. Holloway, the slot man. Pesadena looking for him. Got a throw back outside, incomplete. And Colorado forced the punt. Hold on, we've got a penalty flag thrown downfield. And there's a question that it's just a warning. For, there's a sideline warning on Nebraska. First sideline warning of the half. Sideline warning, the sideline for Nebraska too close to the field. That's getting to be like an <laughs> illegal deity. Yeah, exactly. The official right. ought to just go over to the coach and tell him to get him back. Got to stay off the white. That's almost impossible. So Mark Mariscal punts on. Now one way, folks, one way for Nebraska to quickly come back in this game is to block a punt or have a punt return by Gross for a touchdown. See if special teams can react. Remember, he hauled one back against Kansas State. He is very dangerous. They've had about 800 yards, return yards of punts Nebraska has. They'd love to block one right now if they can. Mariscal will try to get it out of there. He's out of Tallahassee, Florida. He's punting it now for Colorado, standing on the buff 10-yard line. Snap. The Gunners trying to get down. There'll be no return, but it will be Nebraska's ball in their best field position of the day by far. They've started at the 17, 13, and 20. Now they'll start at the 42. Timeout. Our Thanksgiving feast. Presented by Siemens continues on ABC Sports. Colorado, a 10-point underdog, shocking Nebraska, but it's very, very early. And the Cornhuskers now with some maneuverable field position. Coming out for the 42. Eric Crouch following that 33-yard punt. We'll see what he could do. Thunder Collins still in as the eye back. John Gibson, a wide receiver along with Wilson Thomas. Here's Thunder. And in Thunder from which Garrett did he go? It nodded what Nebraska wants to do. And you look at these two teams and what they want to feature. Nebraska about a couple things right here. Both of them, you got an equal power and option. You got to stop them both. Colorado wants to run the ball right at him. And Brent, they've been successful doing that. And that's why the rest of that offense will work for Colorado. We'll chart it all day. Cornelson, Wistrom, Hassebrook all check in. Three substitutions for the Huskers who go back to the shotgun. That's that option looking. Crouch is swallowed. Didn't get anything. He was taking it out all the way. And the middle, Nabdub and Brayton swallow him. This is really that quarterback ice throw. Fonati's going to come behind. It's just a tailback isolation. You come around, Volk is the guy that pulls this time. Pit blocking, and that pit right now is being controlled by the Buffaloes. Eric Crouch does not have positive yardage yet on his three runs. Minus four, no gain, no gain. Here's your third down now. And Crouch back in the go. Colorado's Blitzen from the outside. Fire a beautiful catch by Gibson, and it's going to be close for a first down. Wherever they spot it, and I don't think the umpire gave him a good spot, ladies and gentlemen. I think he moved it back on the spot. Yeah, he's definitely short. They're going to be short. Let's see now if Solich says we're down 14 early. Do we still play field position or do we go? They're going to call a timeout. They're going to talk about it over here. They're just across midfield. This isn't a bad deal. You can huddle up. They won't know what they're doing. You can run on the field. So we'll take a break as Nebraska considers its options. So Nebraska, number one in the BCS. Slant pass no, from the but shot. But still, they cannot get the spot. Let's watch what the umpire does here, Gary. Yeah, slant from the option right there. There's Gibson. He catches the ball. Does his knee come down? I don't know where the ball was, but I think he's short of the 48. I think that was pretty close to being right now. Nebraska is on the sideline. They can run out with their punt team or their short yardage team to make the first down. This forces Colorado to stay at defense stays. We'll see what they do. So Vince Oakridge on the other side, the defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator here of the Buffaloes. And on 
Obviously, Nebraska didn't go for it. Why not? Option. Here's Crouch. He slipped. Didn't get it. Colorado football. Colorado football as Crouch slips. Remember the bulk of the season. Eight games for Nebraska has been at home. Davies, the fullback, is going to come out. Crouch is going to try to come inside of him. Instead of staying wide and following the fullback, he cuts inside. The torque of the play slips him down short. Another negative play for Crouch. Bobby Purify, number 42, the sophomore from Colorado Springs, is back in at tailback. Three running backs already used by the Buffaloes, and remember their starter, Cortland Johnson, out with a knee injury. A short field to work with. Graham, the tight ends on the right side of the formation. It's double tight. It's a play action pass, hit on the release. Graham is out in the foot race, and Graham heading for the end zone. Graham out of bounds, just short of it at the one yard line. Daniel Graham down the far side. They lined up double tight and brought him clear across the formation. You talk about a team that's ready. Wow. You want to know the West Coast offense? Here it is. One coming this way, one coming the other way. A little pick inside for the tight end. Delay. There it is. Deion Booker's got a man to man. Peeks into the backfield. Look at the straight arm right there. And then he turns it on. He's earning a dollar. Big dollars every time he catches a ball. Craver saved the touchdown. Now they line up with Brown as the power back. Full down, couldn't get there. And that, of course, is Brandon Drum, the junior from Alaska. Daniel Graham is going to come inside, hits into it, comes underneath, a little bit of a pick. Booker getting nosy in the backfield on the fake, comes back, and then the big guy. Strong, good hands, smart, and he can run. Neiman checks into the backfield. Chris Brown is the tailback. Oh. Looked like he bobbled it a little bit, then kept on driving for the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! So one quarterback trying to make fourth and one slips. The other quarterback keeps driving at the goal line for Colorado's third touchdown. You saw Gary Barnett ask Pesavino, are you all right? He must have got hit on that pass play previous to Graham. Flores. It's perfect. Following Pesavento's first rushing touchdown of the season. And if you just joined us, folks, that's not a graphic error. Colorado has jumped the number one team in the BCS standing. They have thrown the whole chase up for grabs early. But now, Barnett, who came into this game saying he wanted to be real calm as Pesavento hurt his shoulder. Yep. He's asking for treatment back there as he went in. Always the danger when you send a quarterback into the middle on a quarterback sneak. Robert. Could be a pinch nerve, and if they have to take him out, Gary, who comes in? I think Robert Hodge will come in at this point of the game. He can hand the ball off. They'll give him a little bootlegs. He's the backup junior college transfer. Craig Oaks might come in. There's Hodge. Might come in late in the fourth quarter if they need him, but right now, here's the pass to Graham previously. It seemed he got his arm whacked as he let it go. Throws the ball. He waits, he waits, he waits, and just as he lets it go, he gets driven into the ground, and that's usually what happens. Get that right shoulder driven into the ground, and that's usually when you get it bumped. Now, blow. Davis at the goal line, coming out. He hasn't reached the 20 yet, but he does this time. Breaks free. 40-yard line, in a foot race, midfield. And out of bounds at the 25-yard line. 
bringing it out from the goal line for 74 yards officially. Special teams can turn it around so fast. This time, finally, the Hornhuskers decide to block somebody. Not going to run many back if you don't block one of those guys coming down. Get outside, run with it, and Gibson puts Nebraska in a position to put some points on the board. But the story of this game so far has been the Colorado defense stifling Eric Crouch and the Nebraska offense. Crouch keeps it, battles his way for two or three yards. Now let's go back following Pesavento being tackled on the Graham. I want you to watch Pesavento as he bobbles the snap. He got it back. He then battled in and took a blow right on the shoulder as he dove for the end zone. It is now second down for Eric Crouch and the Huskers. Collins checks into the backfield along with Diedrich. The fullbacks confused. Jeff Davies, now he's set. Second down, and they're going to bring Collins around. The fake, Diedrich, middle, opens, and he's to the 12. First down, we check in with Jack Aru. Jack. Brent, we're watching Bobby Pesavento right now warming up. His uh, shoulder doesn't look bad at all. He told his coach, position coach, he was ready to go back in. One of the reasons why this defense is playing so well for the Buffaloes is the scout team quarterback. It's a name you may remember. Zach Colvin, who used to be the starting quarterback here, transferred for two weeks. He got up in their grill and played Eric Crouch all week against the number ones. Said I gave him some attitude. He certainly did, Jack. Crouch trying it again. And he is having trouble with his footing and his pulling guard that time. I think Sean I have noticed both teams slipping here, Gary. Yeah, they have. Sean Tufts, I think, got him on the ankle, though, Brent, just reaching out because I think Eric would have just pranced into the end zone. They're running a few more options. For Eric Kraut, they have to get him some big plays, and he's the guy that will give big plays to this offense. Bowling checks in as a tight end. And Nebraska brings Davies out. They send Thomas to the right, Gibson to the left. They face a second down from the 11 yard line. Crouch on a beautiful foul. Incomplete. Coming across was John Bowling, who had just checked in, the junior from Lincoln. Missed him wide open. Got to make that play. Chance to win the national championship. Your tight end's wide open. Get you down to the first down marker at least. And Eric Crouch throws wide. This is third down, and obviously, if the Cornhuskers don't get close, they'll settle for a field goal attempt down here. But they really want a touchdown. Trailing by three touchdowns. Here's your third down. Thomas, the basketball players, out to the right. Diedrich, he's the eye back. Davies, the fullback. Play fake, crouch, looking in zone, high, incomplete. Wistrom was double teamed. They bracketed him beautifully with Robinson behind him and Lewis in front of him. It was perfect. Michael Lewis read this beautifully. Coming across, bootleg pass. Wistrom's going one way, coming the act the other way. Looking all the way for it. And two guys, Lewis having the quarterback half the time and Wistrom half the time. And so far, he's been perfect in his coverage. Josh Brown, the junior from Oklahoma, a 27 yard put the Huskers on it's the board. Over, over, over. So Nebraska on the scoreboard. With 3.26 to go in an electric opening quarter here in Boulder, Colorado. Third and long, very difficult to run a bootleg pass. There's Wister by the Lewis right there. You see the great coverage in the back of the end zone. Really nothing for Eric Crouch to do but try to stick it in there and perfect defense again. Colorado believes, they believe, and that's more than half the battle. Jack, I assume we're gonna see Pesavento. He's got his helmet on, eh? Well, Brent, he wants to go back in. The athletic trainer for Colorado thinks that he has suffered a very slight, and I emphasize slight, separation of the shoulder. Gary, as you and Brent alluded to, that's what you put yourself into when you put your quarterback down low to try and score short. So there are Colorado's first four possessions, folks. Would you believe it? And Three touchdowns. And they would have scored here if they hadn't had the holding penalty up front. He Good almost wasted it in there. 
they have controlled the line of scrimmage. Jerome and Rodgers have done a job, and Graham is magnificent. Gary, what surprises you the most? I think the Nebraska linebackers. They've been out of sync. They're overrunning plays. They have to stop the run. Well, we'll see how they do on this set now. And they're coming out on the 20-yard uh, line. Now, I remember... Pesaveno had his helmet back on, and he'll be coming out. And let's remind you about Monday Night Football. This could be a good one. Remember a year ago, folks? Warwick Dunn, Marshall Falk, Marshall Falk, Warwick Dunn. It can't get any better than that. Buccaneers and the Rams, Monday Night Live, 9 Eastern time. And uh, Pesaveno brings the offense back out. He's a warrior, folks, a survivor, a kid that wouldn't quit. Here's the handoff now to Purify. The middle wide open again. And Purify to the 35-yard line. And Gary, there's your point. I Where are the it. linebackers? I don't get it. It's simple misdirection. Simple. I mean, this is nothing outrageous. Tailback takes a step one way, comes back the other way. Where are these linebackers going? They're overrun. Look at Burrow. Way out of the play over here. No linebacker play. You have to make those stops if you're a middle linebacker. 44 yards, and folks, Colorado has rushed for better than 100 yards in the opening quarter. And Nebraska for only 35, and we have a player down, and that's DeWan Gross. DeWan Gross who does such a nice job at corner, but when you look at Colorado, Balance also means a lot. You mentioned they ran for 101, Brent. They've also thrown for 96, and that is right on par. All year, this Colorado team has run an average of 214 a game and passed an average of 215 a game. Balance is the name of this offense. So Bobby Pesavento, the youngster who didn't give up, and we ask him, why didn't you give up after you got benched? It's not like I was backing up a bad quarterback. You know, I never doubted myself. I always kept a high confidence in myself and just worked hard, whether it was in the weight room, on the practice field, in the meeting rooms. Always working hard, and finally my opportunity came, and I just took advantage of it. He and Craig Oaks are the best of friends. Pesavano realizes how talented Oaks is, and it's a combination that has worked out beautifully for Barnett. And one thing you've got to give Gary credit for is the way he brings personalities together. First down and 10. Here's Pesavero out of the backfield. Here hits Colin Johnson, who's back in the game. Johnson for seven yards. He's the best receiver of the running backs. Portland Johnson, the tight end position. A little bit of a change up here already for Nebraska. Shane Lee, the, look at that, man, linebacker on the tight end right there. That's a tough matchup. Play at the line of scrimmage and run all over the field for that guy. I'm sure Sean Watson, the coordinator for Colorado, has made note. Second down. with Brown, the ball carrier that time. And let's remind you, now the winner here will play again next Saturday night against either Oklahoma or Texas for the conference crown and an automatic BCS bid. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship next Saturday. It's live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. And wouldn't it be a story if these Buffaloes made it after losing their opener to Fresno State and being vilified that man was almost run out for a play call that resulted in an interception. Third down. Back in Brown, the power back, pounding in the middle of this Nebraska defense to the 11-yard line. And the Cornhuskers are going to have to show up with some tacklers. That's 16 more yards. And Barnett's offensive line is crushing Nebraska. Well, Big 12 is in shock right now. This offensive line, as you mentioned it, Page, Bates, Gerard, Rogers, Lucier, even Graham have been blowing up a proud defense of, of Nebraska, giving up only 93 yards rushing all year a game. And look what they're doing today. On the left side are two first-round draft choices on this formation, Gerard and Rodgers. They'll run in that direction. Brown. Touchdown! Their fourth touchdown of the opening quarter. The calm 
toughness that Barnett has exuded all weekend. He said, the one thing I want to do against Solich in Nebraska is make sure I keep these players calm. I don't want them too hyper. There will be no new Rocky speeches by me. Another Northwestern transfer, Wayne Lucer this time, number 78, gets up, gets on the linebacker, and makes the block. And Flores pounds in his fourth extra point of the quarter. One more look at the center this time. Brown's a Northwestern guy. Watch the center get the middle linebacker. Again, overrunning the play. Lucier makes the snap, rubs out, and just walls that middle linebacker past the play. You cannot be over aggressive. You have to play inside out, and Colorado has taken advantage of it right now. So a Northwestern block and a Northwestern ball carrier. Look at that, right up the gut against the proudest defense in college football. And do I hear the cheers down at Gainesville right now? Do I hear some people around the country uh, getting excited? How about getting Knoxville, Tennessee? Exactly. How about out in Eugene, Oregon? <laughs> How about in all of those spots where those teams are chasing? Number one or number two? Miami with a big one tomorrow night on ABC against Washington. And doesn't that loom huge now, especially if Barnett and the Buffaloes can keep it up? Coach Barnett did one of the great jobs that I've ever seen when he coached Northwestern all the way to the Rose Bowl. Never in my lifetime did I expect the Wildcats to reach the Rose Bowl. That man can flat out coach. So here's Brom again at the goal line. And here comes Davis looking for that alley again out of bounds. Let's go back. I said to Coach Barnett, after you lost that horrible game to Fresno and got second guessed up and down Colorado, what did you do to keep this team together? We didn't read anything. We didn't listen to anything. We just held on to each other and, and uh, looked within that room where everybody was and said, this is where our strength is, and this is who we can count on. We can't count on anybody else. Now let's go. And that's what we did. That's the way it is in sports. And the one thing Barnett did at Northwestern was bring the players together. It was a tightly knit group. And they are the same here in Boulder. First down and 10 now. A stunned Nebraska. Thunder Collins looks for daylight. And the black shirts of Colorado jump him as Killian, the linebacker, hits him. And look at the play chart. It is not pretty. Remember, this last drive was following the kickoff return down the plus territory. Could only get three points out of it. Eric Crouch has been stymied. Nothing from Crouch in this game. And at Colorado defense, when they can shut down Brent, the running game with the front four, and the option game with Lewis, that's a nice, nice group. Second down and seven. And now Collins coming around behind. Diedrich and Crouch keeps it from him and nothing doing. Colorado not fooled. Joey Johnson again. I really think Eric Crouch missed this one. He had the block to cut inside. He got a little fancy on the option again, trying to get too much out of the play. He had a block on the linebacker, Johnson. He could have just gashed it inside for an easy first down. Look at that, folks. I've never been around that number with number seven. Seven times and no yards to show for. Here is third down now. Thunder Collins, the eye back. Nebraska. 0 for 4 on third down. The option, the pitch. Collins has got it. Nothing but daylight. The cut. And he rams into the 40-yard line. Nebraska rolling. 23 yards by Thunder Collins. Now you wonder if Frank Solich has finally found a formation that he can get his quarterback down the line to pitch the ball. So far, with wide receivers now, have a little different look from this Colorado defense. Eric gets to the end man on the line of scrimmage right here, pitches it, and that's just like a beautiful sweep call as we get to the end of the first quarter. Maybe Nebraska has found a formation. It is arguably the most shocking first quarter in this college football season. Colorado has jumped over number one, BCS Nebraska. They score 28 3 back into this message and a word from our ABC stations.
28 to 3, Gary. Did you ever think you would see a Nebraska defense shredded like that on one quarter? No, I really haven't. I thought maybe you could throw the ball to do that, but I've never thought you'd be able to run inside the tackles to shred them like that. A tremendous, I would say, effort from that offensive line. I want to say game plan. You never dream you're going to run that many yards right up the gun against them. I mean, wow. So Nebraska will open the second quarter in Colorado territory from the 41, and Crouch is going to throw. Goes Wistrom. Make the diving catch at the five, and number 31, Lewis, is all over Wistrom. We were told by Barnett and the staff that Lewis is a big time safety. And man, were they right about this. Still doesn't look to me like Wistrom is 100%. I remember him just outrunning people. Lewis, a great player, but since he was injured that week before Texas Tech, Brent, Tracy Wistrom has caught one pass in the last four football games. Here's second down and 10 for Crouch. You're keeping it going up the middle. There's his first positive gain, and it's to the 36-yard line with Walrus. Quarterback ISO. Quarterback ISO again from the shotgun. Again, it looks like Nebraska's already going to their wide formations, their split formations, and that is not what they comfortably like to run. Total yards. Holy yeah. 28 to 3 on the scoreboard. Colorado hoping to make it to the Big 12 championship game. The corners are soft. Third down. Crouch a straight drop. Juggle incomplete. And again, it was the hit in the secondary. Roderick Sneed, number 26, out of Mesquite, Texas. John Bowling caught this one up before he got hit. He might have felt that one coming. But Eric Crouch threw a good ball here and passed up Wistrom for an easy first down and went down a little farther to Bowling. And that's a drop pass. Crouch and the Huskers will go on fourth and five. I think you got to go for it. Trailing to absolutely. Absolutely. Got to go for it. And I wouldn't mind if they burned the timeout. Which is exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> we'll talk about what they want to do here. Colorado 28, Nebraska 3. <laughs> 35 and 5 as a starter. Lost twice as a freshman. Once his sophomore year. Twice as a junior. Colorado's never beaten him. He's unbeaten this year, and he's on the ropes early. Here comes that end around play that they like. So it works for a first down that time. Illegal formation on the offense. Fewer than seven players on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So now. It's an entirely different play after the penalty. A little finesse play coming out of the play, the timeout, and go with the option pitch, try to pick it up. It works, but in just a simple miscue, an unforced error. Nebraska lines up in the formation wrong, and they're going to have to punt the ball. So Larson. Standing on the Nebraska 45. Hollowell is back deep. He's going to let this one go to the end zone. So the fake by Hollowell works. Hollowell works. And it'll come out on the 20. Well, we mentioned that 35 and 5. Crouch has won 35 games in his career. Only three quarterbacks in NCAA history have made more. Our Aflac trivia question. Name the three quarterbacks. One of them I know you know. Come on. If you get all three, you're a football genius. One I know. I'm going to give folks <laughs> my hand. One of them eventually coached the Oakland Raiders. Okay, that's the end of the hits. First down and 10 now. For Pesavino and the Buffaloes. They motion the fullback. And they run behind him with Purify to the 25-yard line. Five more yards, and Drum opens it up. Well, folks, here's one you're going to want to watch because look who's back. In the Skins game, it's none other than Mr. Woods himself. Tiger Woods. What's a Skins game without him? That's tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern. And then you come back 
for the back nine, and there'll be $200,000 on the 18th hole. Brent, how, how about for Colorado? Just 17 plays for 238 yards. Second down play fake. Pesavento's gonna throw on the run. Graham, the tight end again. He scored one touchdown. He set up a second, and now he's near midfield. Number 89 for 23, four yards on the day. Bootleg pass, one way going the other. He runs right by the middle linebacker, Jamie Burrell that time. He's got the crossing man in that play action pass, and this is big time. I love tight ends in offense, and Colorado is keeping a blend all game. First down and 10, and now they run a purified right side. He bolts free, purified to the 35-yard line. That's 17 more yards of offense for Colorado, and Nebraska must be shell-shocked by now. They're completely off balance with this balanced attack. Purify goes over 100 yards. It's only the second back this season to gain 100 yards against this Nebraska team. And remember, he had a 78-yard touchdown call back because of holding. First down and 10. <laughs> College football fans have to be stunned. Pesavino. McCoy, McCoy out at about the one-yard line. Derek McCoy for 34 more yards on Pesavento's pass. This is like they're going against the scout team for Colorado. Guys running all over the field. Open Pesavento coming right across there. There's McCoy, Pesavento. One guy's going to go this way, and Pesavento says, boy, this is easy. This is real easy. I got just a little lob over the corner. There's no safety right there. And Derek McCoy comes, grabs it, and nearly scores. Chris Brown is back in. He lines up behind Drum. Drum will lead the way. Chris Brown, touchdown! Would you believe what's happening here today in Boulder, Colorado? The return to dominance indeed. Six possessions and five touchdowns. That's what Colorado has buried Nebraska with here in the first half. 314 yards of offense. Good job by the holder. The ball was on the ground, and he did a slick job. Jason Burianek out of Boulder. Pesavento, six for eight in this football game. This is a beautiful touch. And then it's nearly a walk-in into the end zone on third and one. They go right, just walk it in, does Brown. That's as easy as it gets. This is the quietest sea of red that I have ever, ever been around. Shocked Husker fans. Colorado has jumped all over their top-ranked team. People who can't believe it, who travel from all over that state. And another kickoff drew deep. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road, and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Our setting in Boulder, Colorado, one of the loveliest campuses in the United States. Fans are shoehorned in for this day after Thanksgiving special. Diedrich is the eye back. Nothing doing against the middle of the front. Well, we ask you the athlete for the question. Eric Crouch has won 35 games at Nebraska. Only three quarterbacks in NCAA history have one more. And here they are. There he is, folks. Did, did you get him? John Rouch. One time, Georgia star back in the book. Rick Leach did a great job at Michigan, won 38 times, and the all-time leader in wins. Peyton Manning, Tennessee. Gary Danielson was all over Manning. <laughs> and Crouch. Uh, I think I knew Leach, too. I didn't know the first one. <laughs> I didn't either, Dan. I forgot that one. Second down, 
There's the flare pass to Thomas. And he battles for about four yards. Wilson Thomas. Will, let's check in with John Thomas. I bet John that uh, John Saunders, I'll bet uh, John that Terry Bowden picked this upset, right? He was all over it today, right, partner? He actually said it was going to be a close game. Didn't expect it this way. Burger King update. Texas, Texas A&M. Mark Ferris. Everett Walls picks it off and goes out of bounds. That really just sealed the victory in a game where there wasn't a lot of offense. 21 to 7 as they add one after that. Esper, back to you. You've got all the offense you can handle, Brent. Hey, John, get a little tea. Put some honey in it, my friend, and you'll be all right in a couple hours. Here comes Cox. Life is it complete. And it's Thomas again. Close to midfield as Crouch delivers a strike. You know, Gary, what's interesting about Eric Crouch undergoing shoulder surgery at each of the last two years, and they've all said, the coaches and Crouch included, he's throwing much better than uh, a year ago. Well, it helps to be healthy, and you're right. I think Frank Solich has run the option less this year coming into this game to keep him healthy. But considering that schedule that Nebraska had stacked so much in their favor with all those home games, he had the luxury of doing it. That's a 25-yard gain for Crouch. Here comes that end around, and back to Crouch, who's gonna throw it. There's a tight end. It's Wistrow, and he's out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Michael Lewis forces him out, but off the double reverse, Crouch throws for 24 more yards. So look what Nebraska has been forced to do. A drop back shotgun pass where Crouch hits Thomas. And now a double reverse. Hand the ball off. Pitch it to the wide receiver. Throw it back to the quarterback. And get it downfield to the tight end. I mean, they go the whole playbook to try to get yards. They still haven't got points, but they're trying to get yards against this tough Colorado defense. They're obviously trying to occupy number 31, Lewis, who's been so good about pressing the line and then dropping back. First and 10, Diebert runs into his own line and finally gets thrown aside by Marquise Harris. Nebraska again out of sync. Well, our first and 10 this quarter is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, and then this time the the line would be at the 17-yard line. You can see it there. You said it, Brent. He ran right into the back of his own guy, Dietrich, just outside the screen. The block could have come right in here. And watch if he couldn't get outside this. This runs right in the back of his guy. Here's second down. And running up the middle. Touchdown, Steve Kreewald, the freshman, fullback, 24 yards, and Nebraska scores for the first time today. You play option, you play tailback, and all of a sudden they slip it to that fullback, and Kreewald, the inside play to the fullback, just slip it to him very quickly. Watch the action of the quarterback and the tailback going this way, and then boom, a little misdirection with Kreewald right behind it to put points on the board. Point now, critical, and uh, that one added by Josh Brown. Colorado saw their misdirection plays. Now Nebraska gives you a little bit of a misdirection play. Handoff all the way. There's no read there. It's just play action. You can the ball after the fullback, and he scampers. Now you would say Nebraska's in this game, but folks, we've got to see something for the defense. Got to stop them once, don't they? They stopped them once in this game, and that's because they had a holding penalty to back it up first and 20. We've got to find our friends from Nebraska and ask them, when's the last time someone hit Nebraska for more than 300 yards in the first half, in the first half of a football game? Charlie McBride, he's probably beside himself oh, yeah. in retirement, Charlie saying, come on. There. Charlie went out to rake leaves or something. He can't watch the rest of this one. <laughs> Clyde Sorrell and Hollowell go back deep for this kickoff. And it's a dead. Bring it out on the 20 yard line. And now it's time for our Pacific Live game on summary. Well, we've talked about the defense. They've given up 100.
54 rushing yards in this game. They've also given up 160 passing yards. They have been shredded in the middle. The offensive line for Colorado has done a tremendous job, but I still say the linebackers are overrunning plays. So Colorado attacking first the two defensive tackles, Schlechter and Clanton. Five-man line, they take it out to one of the linebackers. And Marcus Houston in for the first time today. And he runs to the 24. So here's the highly touted Marcus Houston out of Denver. And here are the possession charts, and you can see Six possessions and five touchdowns for the Buffaloes. Phenomenal. And, and the, the last two, 80 yards back to back in only five plays. Almost unheard of against this Nebraska team. Looking forward is Pesaveno to watching some more of Marcus Houston. They say that Purify has moved ahead of him. They're going to try number 21 and nothing doing. Closing was Des Moines Adams. Coming hard for the backside there. Change up by Craig Bowl, defensive coordinator. He's going with five defensive linemen against that offensive line. He's only got two linebackers in the game now. He's going to try to win. One, two, three, four, five. All of them up there just running the ball. Kelsey to one side, Adams to the other, and they're trying to win and retake that line of scrimmage. Good pickup, partner. That's a big change for Craig. Third down. There was movement. Now the flag. Pesavino fires caught out of bounds, but the linesman says no. Play is nullified. What but a it's throw. a movement down there. That was a nice <laughs> throw by Pesavino. Pesavino. That was a great throw. I mean, Gross had great coverage there, and McCoy got that stuck right in his hands from that far away. Before the snap occurred, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Now we go to third down, and you would think that they would be looking for Daniel Graham with Scott Shanley having watched him. And there is Daniel Graham, folks, here today. Three passes, 93 yards, right. and one touchdown. And Barnett said, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he'll be the first tight end drafted. Hey, this guy's better in person than he is on film. He was good on film. Third down. <laughs> Lucky I got five years to pay. Third down. checks back in. And Colorado is forced to punt. Now, this is a big stop for this defense. And Gary Daniels had picked it up immediately that Craig had gone to the five defensive linemen. And now it will be up to Colorado to adjust off of that. You would think they're going to have to throw a little bit more. You don't like to throw when you're up 35-10. Barnett will have to talk about it with his offensive staff. He has a bright young man upstairs, and Sean Watson, his offensive coordinator, he brought him here from Northwestern. Colorado's Someday, been, Sean will be a head coach. Yes, he today. will. Colorado's been stopped twice. Both times they had penalties to hurt their drive or actually stop their drive. Right, Skill. Now let's see if the Huskers come after him. They want to return. Here's Gross from the 34. Down the sideline, twists, but he was out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So we'll take a break. Folks, this is not a mistake. Colorado 35, Nebraska 10. Timeout. There are as many NFL prospects on this Colorado team as almost any team I've been around. You're looking at one right here. Number 31, safety Michael Lewis. He's fast enough and hits hard enough to play inside and outside in this game. Crouch now bringing it for the corner. Crouch across the 45 on his best run from scrimmage of the day. Now we asked Lewis about coming into this game, the mental approach to Nebraska. We feel like in the last couple of years we've been coming into this game too emotionally charged. You know, we want to channel that emotion and come out more focused in there, plan for each other. And that's exactly what they have done here, leading 35-10. But now, after that 15-yard run, the Huskers are starting to bring some offense. Last drive, it was trick plays. Now they come back with a little bread and butter. 
Now they line up in the eye. Now it's Karch on that option. Here's the pitch to Thunder Collins. And Collins is out at the 36-yard line. Gary, this is more what we expected to see from Nebraska. I don't think there's any doubt that the spread formations have loosened up this Colorado defense. Now the bread and butter offense of Nebraska is starting to emerge. The score doesn't help them. 35-10, but you peck away. One drive at a time, one gain at a time, one first down at a time, and then you put points on the board and look up at halftime, see where you are. The goal here is to get the 35-17 and get the defense to hang on against the Colorado running backs. Second down now. Here's that base eye again. Thunder's hit in the backfield by Justin Bannon, the senior from Fair Oaks, California. So, here in Boulder, Colorado, on a Friday afternoon, Colorado shocking Eric Crouch. They have dominated the line of scrimmage, and Crouch has been unable to break free. His best run of the game for 15 yards. That slip was on fourth down and less than a yard. And now Thunder Collins shaking up. Yep, on that last play that you got hit in the backfield coming around, man, and just put him down, and he stayed down. Looks like it is left leg, knee, ankle, something like that. There he is, 97, hits him in the backfield, rolls. Usually they fall on that ankle, what happens there, and boy, did he take it. There's no, there's no question about Colorado's desire. Remember, folks, in each of the last two years, each of the last two years, they've gone to the last play and lost both games. Barnett missed a field goal in here a couple years ago, and they lost in overtime. Then a year ago, they lost to Nebraska on a field goal in Lincoln. Third down now, and Karch rolls hard right. Fires Thomas. I don't think he's got the first down. It's going to be very close. It looked good, it looked good to me. He landed on his back just past the first down He got marker. it. You're right. Good eye up here, buddy. Again, one of those things that Eric Crouch does so well as a weapon in offense. Look, he's struggling today. There's no doubt about that. His Buffaloes are ready for him. But he continues to peck away. Isolation plays, option plays, quarterback draws, quarterback iso. You must still stop him. Zajcek, who's caught one pass, is coming around. The fake from Diedrich keeps it, breaks free, touchdown! Nebraska's back in it. They faked the end around beautifully that time for 32 yards. I saw Zajcek out there, one of his specialties. He started back around. They bit on Zajcek, and Diedrich turned it in. And Barnett saying, oh, no, here we go again. You're right. And big Finote that time, number 77, Big Sir. You got a pancake on that one. Mr. Sir, Big Sir. Big Sir, like I like Big Sir. I like your nickname. <laughs> big Sir. <laughs> and the extra point by Josh is good. Frank Solich is oh, calling. Hold on now. No good. No good. They missed the extra point. It's a beautiful kick. It just didn't go between the posts. I thought it was just like, <laughs> looks so good, and Solich can't believe it either. Here's the touchdown play. They fake the play coming around. Finote's right here. He goes outside. I don't know if we catch all of it, but you'll see the play. The fake reverse one way. Diedrich, watch number 77. He finds him, and it's Lewis right there that gets it. Two future NFL players. Watch him on the ground. There he is. Big surf gets a pancake. So Fonati, one of the finest offensive linemen in the country, blows it open. The determined look on his face. The young man's only a junior in Nebraska, hoping, of course, that uh, he comes back for his senior year. How about Lewis? He says, you know what? I'll handle the tight end, and I'll take the quarterback, but I don't want that guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> Where did he come from? Wistrup's okay. Crowd just okay. I don't want that guy anymore. Short. Here's Holloway. He's coming from the 15. After the 30-yard line. Let's see now if Sean Watson is going to have to go to more of a passing game early in downs. As Craig Ball has changed up his defense to stop that running game with five defensive linemen. 
Pesaveno has played brilliantly in this game. 71% of his passes in the last three starts. Look at that. 75% in this game. But here comes Eric Crouch. He keeps making plays. He's got the ball every snap. Let's take another look at this uh, missed extra point. You folks at home probably saw a lot better than I did up here. <laughs> he just pulled it. They hooked it right there, didn't he? Yep. Just slid past. First down and 10. Here's Purify. And that five-man line, Gary, is causing Colorado problems right now. A great adjustment by Craig Bull, the defensive coordinator. It also looks that now, finally, Nebraska has settled down in their defense. They're staying home. They're forcing the guy wide and trusting their running ability to run the guy on the angle instead of trying to get there too quickly. Maybe it was Nebraska this year that was too juiced up for this game like Colorado has been in the past. Now they're going to put four down. They'll walk the linebacker up. They set against the basic guy. Here comes the run. And Nebraska was ready for it that time as Justin Smith makes a stop. How are the injuries down there, Jack? This is a pretty hard-hitting game. Brent, indeed it is, and Thunder Collins, you saw him being helped off the field. The athletic trainers have taken a look at his left ankle. They are not sure if it's a severe enough sprain to keep him out of the game, but they are going to retape him and make him a question mark. You may, and I repeat may, see him back in the competition. Folks, that's a reporter just a few feet away from the ankle. He can see what kind of tape they were using. Way to go, Jack. Pull down now. Hollowell comes into the slot. Pesavento's going to look in that direction. Oh, he's going to go back outside. Hollowell breaks beautifully. A wonderful pattern by Hollowell for the Colorado first down and neatly thrown by Pesavento for 13. Oh, see, I think it was a neat route and a wonderful pass. See, I got that's a quarterback in me, right? <laughs> Hollowell one on one to the outside with the Ricketts. And he jitter came in, jitterbugged a little bit. He's the punt returner. You know it's tough to cover him. He can go three directions at one time, but Pesavento put it right there. Nowhere else. Good coverage to the outside. Hey, this ain't fair. I'm right there. There's the ball. So Nebraska walks the back off, and it is successful. Selecta, number 56, was in on that tackle. But what they've done with Burrow is they've taken him out of the middle, yes, they and they're have. starting to walk him up between the tackle and the end. And they're starting to jam up the offensive lineman. Look at that throw. Well, that's good coverage. You can't ask your corner to cover a guy all over the field much better than that. I thought it was a heck of a catch with a guy <laughs> draped all over. <laughs> they pay the big money for the guy that throws it. That's <laughs> true, my friend. Second down at nine. Here's a fake to Brown. Pass up and oh! Graham couldn't hang on. And he was muscled that time by Scott Shanley pretty good. So you give Shanley a break on that play. Shanley's got Graham all over the field, man-to-man -man coverage. Graham, when you come out and just run a little delay like that, even if it's a play-action pass, Shanley says, uh-uh, you got all those yards. Not when I'm covering you, you ain't getting all those yards. You better go downfield first. That's a tremendous job. Do you think that was interference, Gary? No. Do you think he was on him too No, early? I don't think so. Not at all, right? I, I, right? The hands weren't on his no, hips. I had, I he wasn't twisting. <laughs> You're not buying that He was at, at the all, line huh? of scrimmage. I thought times. he was draped all over. Third down and nine. Pesavino straight back, blitz, coming Burrow, has Graham, they won't stop him this time. Inside the 40, there's no stopping the tight end, folks. I don't know that one man can stick with number 89. Well, this time, Kelsey, number 57, comes out and drops as a defensive end. You see him right there, number 57. They tried to bait for the crossing route. It was a perfect call by Nebraska. As Kelsey, who makes the tackle, is going to come out of the game. But they were ready for it. It's just another great throw by Pesavano. Hey, let's talk about this Graham. Four for 112. Now, you want Shockey against my Graham in the NFL. Or you want to, I'll, I'll let take you out a book. I'll <laughs> take a book. This guy's the best senior, the other guy's the best junior. Yeah. Both pretty dang good. But I want to tell you, this kid is something. Daddy played with Dan Fouts at Oregon, later with the Denver Broncos. He's a dandy. Here's Graham, touchdown! Oh, my! 36 more yards for Colorado. And what a huge score that is. I cannot emphasize this too much because Nebraska had scored the last two times they'd handled the football. 
I'm going to get a celebration penalty, I think, for Colorado. They wanted to go for two. Colorado wanted to go for two, and now I think they're going to be forced to kick the extra point. Just don't call Campo down in Dallas and ask him what to do. Oh, gee, Brent, jump onto the poor guy. <laughs> hey, Gerard and Rogers that time. The two big offensive linemen broke it free for Colorado. Celebration down there in the end zone. I don't know, I don't which, know yeah, why I, it's taking so long to uh Yeah, I, I to think it is. The touchdown out. is good. Sure. After the play, it ended. Personal foul on oh, Colorado. Oh, no, this is, this is worse. My apologies. The 18 -yard line. This was not a celebration. Right. Must have been a hit in the end zone or a taunting at the end zone at the end of the play. Now, Barnett is forced to go for one. The way they're running the ball, not I don't blame them this. for going for two. Yeah, coach is not happy about this. Here's Flores. Don't hit the center. So here comes your 35 yard extra point. You got this one far enough. Good. See, now I like that. You waited on that one. No, yeah, I did. I didn't call it. <laughs> You're right. I was premature on that other Same one. Same action as the play action pass, but this time, Jerome and Rogers do it. First, it went to Graham. Crossing. Third down, little pick play. Watch the other guy pick Kelsey right there. Sweeney goes in for it, and Graham just grabs it. Kelsey kind of lands on his own shoulder or hand there. Hey, Gary. But then watch the big guys here, though. Watch the two guys. You talked about them. Two great offensive linemen. Ode gets the kick out. Here comes Rodgers around, lays it out, and walk it. Why, if Shanley's assigned to Graham, on that pass to Graham, did he blitz from that side? They were doing a zone blitz. Kelsey was replacing them. They were in a zone coverage. They were expecting that crossing route so they wouldn't get picked. Better execution by Colorado. Colorado than knew Kelsey was coming back. They nailed it. Oh, yeah, they was picked, picked back. the guy in the middle of the field. It's great, great coaching by Colorado. Let's check in with Jagaroo. Well, Brent, I'm surrounded by the New York firemen, Ladder Company 24, that were invited here by Gary Barnett. We'll tell you more about it after the kick. Oh, it's great to have him here, Jack. We'll come right back to you after this kickoff. 42 points put on the board by Colorado in the first half. And this time he won't play out. Back to Jack. Well, Brian Thomas has decided to be the spokesperson for Ladder Company 24. How did this all happen, Brian? Well, a good friend of ours back in New York, Paul Keo, asked us if we wanted to come out for the game. We've been working like crazy out there in New York, and uh, it was a nice break for some of the guys to come out. Coach Barnett found out we were coming out, got us on the sidelines. You can tell they're New Yorkers. Hey, let me ask you a little bit about watching from the sidelines. You watch on TV all the time. What's the difference? Oh, it's incredible here. The fans are so intense here. They're really into the game. We're having a great time. Great time down there. Brent, they arrived at 1.30 last evening. That was about 30 minutes before last call. And they go back tomorrow. So if the Buffs should win, they're going to party. I think we're going to have a good time in honor of a lot of friends we have back in New York and friends that aren't here anymore. Thanks a lot, Jack. The screen pass, Thomas in the middle. He breaks free. Foot race now for the end zone. Only one man with an angle on him. Out of bounds at the one yard line. Robbie Robinson had the angle, stayed with him. He was the only man who could stop Thomas. That, folks, is a 78 yard gain. And Nebraska not backing away. Thomas goes in motion. Watch this ball gets deflected, I believe. Isn't that what happened right at it? Watch it gets tipped. Good concentration. And uh oh, everybody's downfield. Look at those knockdowns. Thomas goes downfield. He's got a personal protector in front of him, but Robinson saves the day. For the meantime. Now Nebraska. They load up. Freewald is in there with Davis. Battles touchdown. Diedrich scores for Nebraska. What did I tell you about the Flutie game? What day was it played on? Day after Thanksgiving. Yes, sir, right? my friend. And here we go again. You're begging for another one, aren't yes, you? Yes, sir. I'm begging. begging. I'm begging. <laughs> I don't get enough air time on the ESPN oh, Classic. Wow, I'm here it is. Isolation play. Lead blockers. Got two big fullbacks in front of you. Diedrich with three guys in front of him falls forward and reaches across. And Nebraska, 23 points. If they put one of this through in the first half. This time, 
Josh Brown makes it, Terry. <laughs> How about that? I think if Frank Solich knew he was going to score 23 points in the first half, he'd have taken it. No way he dreams he gives up 42. So Diedrich, who battled into the end zone for that score, and uh, Jackaroo, we got one brewing here, my friend. Boy, Brent Dewey, and you know, part of our weekly action on the sidelines is the old you don't know Jack. You log on to ABC.com as Jeff from Lincoln, Nebraska did, and he wants to know a little bit about the history of the Colorado Buffalo named Ralphie. Well, Jeff, a Buffalo did make its first appearance on the sidelines in 1934, but it wasn't named Ralphie. Ralphie made his first regular appearance in 1966. He's been on the sidelines since. This is Ralphie Four. He weighs in at 1,200 pounds. I'm not going to try and milk him. Uh, Jack, is that, a, is that a male or a female? That That's Buffalo? a female, Brent. Originally named Rowdy. Huh. Should be named Rachel. All right, here's a kickoff by Nebraska. Play. Remind everybody now, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have scores and highlights from college football today. They'll show you how Texas came on in the fourth quarter to beat the Aggies. They'll look at the rivalry that dates back to 1897. Ohio State of Michigan. Who are you liking that Ohio State Michigan game in Ann Arbor, my friend? I like Michigan in this one. They're due to play a good game. They've won a couple when they haven't played so well. I think they'll be ready to play this game. What's the deal with Steve Bellasar? Is he going to play for the I, uh, I really salute Tressel bringing him back on the team. I don't know if he'll play, but he's part of the family and he deserves to suit up for the last game. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I certainly hope things work out. There it is. Most ever allowed in a half. 42 points. Colorado goes to Motion McCoy. Run back away from the motion and again a huge hole for the running back, Brown. Now, this is an interesting piece of strategy by Gary Barnett. Chris Brown has not been used much in their last couple of games, as you Buffalo fans are very well aware. We're saving him. We're saving him for this game. Brown is a tough inside runner, and he knew that was the kind of back he was going to need at some point against Nebraska. And remember, this Colorado team is averaging rushing for the year in a game. 214 yards rushing a game, not a half. And they're doing it against the best defense. Oh, Folks, they put up. 400 yards of offense here in the first half. Purify to the 40-yard line. Picks up more yardage. The sophomore from Colorado Springs, and he looks like he's going to be I'm, a dancer. I'm telling you, Andrew Gerard doesn't even need an agent. They just put on this tape, mail it to all the NFL teams, and watch him block. He has just been putting on a clinic of opening holes, pulling, pass blocking, and everything. Barnett said that Gerard would be the first guard selected in the NFL draft. Folks, he's number 65, 6'4", 320. And he can flat move. And look at that pancake. There he is right there. There's Gerard, 65, getting up in a pancake. And he handled Mr. Kelsey that time with a penalty flag. Thrown back there at the 45-yard line. And there he is, number 65, Gerard, as they... Uh, they sort out the situation. So along with Gerard, his running mate right next to him is Rogers. He's number 71. Now he will not be the first tackle. He could go in the first round. The first After tackle. After the play had ended, personal foul on the offense. 15 yeah. yard penalty. That's twice we've had personal down. fouls. Yes, and this is again, Colorado has to stay within their game. It's a long football game. The penalty was not on Gerard, I don't believe. No, I don't think so either. No, it was downfield. And I'm telling you right now, Nebraska gets this ball back again. <laughs> right now, I feel they can score again. So uh, let's watch Gerard and Rodgers now as they come out. I want to say that McKinney down in Miami, folks. Yeah, he's the tank. He will be the number one tackle selected in the draft. Great job. Like, look at this now. Here they are. Wayne Lucer, too. The center is doing an outstanding job in the most time. Now you put Graham next to those two big hulks. Now you got third down along. They both pull. They leave Purify. Rodgers may have run by his man that time. He looked back like, dang it, I should have picked him up. But he was intent on getting downfield to throw a block, and he may have missed the man that could have opened the way had Rodgers picked him off that yeah, time. Yeah, Vidrell did a nice job of running inside the big guy. That's the one advantage you have as a linebacker. You can cut inside those big guys that are pulling around the outside. Watch number nine. He reads the big guy, 
Purify doesn't do a, a great job of setting up and helping that big guy, that's a tough block for him. Yeah, it is a tough block. He's getting outside with yes, all that exactly. weight. Yes, exactly. That's his job, leaning. too. Yeah. That's his job to get outside. Nice job by Mark Madrell. Let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, this is a traditional Thanksgiving weekend game, so both teams have to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. Last year, it was the Colorado Buffaloes with a weather delay that found themselves still here in Boulder when dinner was supposed to be served at their restaurant at the hotel where they were staying in Lincoln. So what does a head coach like Gary Barnett do? He dials up a local fast food hamburger chain, says, hi, I'm Gary Barnett. I need 100 cheeseburgers. I need some uh, French fries and, oh, yeah, some milkshakes. Barnett went down there on his own, gathered him up, and Thanksgiving dinner last year for the Buffaloes was Thanksgiving burgers. This year, though, Gary Barnett invited the families and the players together, and they enjoyed more traditional turkey yesterday. All right, Jack, thank you. Now, minute on the clock, and it's fourth down. Gary Barnett brought that special team over because you know, you just know that Nebraska in this situation could be storming up there at the line of scrimmage and coming after Maricel. Gross, the return man, is back. We've got one minute left on the clock in this half, and haven't we seen kicking games turn around a lot of football games this year? Trying to get it Maricel, he gets it off. The Gunners are coming down. It takes a beautiful Colorado hop and out of bounds. Gross did not move up on it. Crouch with 53 seconds here, Gary. No timeouts left, but a field goal would be huge. It would make it a 16-point game, I believe. Yes, yeah, 16-point game. Look at the last three times. Eric Crouch throwing the ball better now. 139 yards passing in the half. Spreading out the offense. If they could get into field goal range, I think Frank Solich would take that. Ben Cornelson, number 81, is off to Crouch's right. On first down, the quarterback draw. Eric trying to pick his way out to the 30. That's short on the first down. Moore with the stop there, so the clock ticking down now. Crouch quickly up. They're still 70 yards away. Off to the side, Thunder doesn't get out of bounds, now he does. Clock is stopped, and it's a first down with 27 seconds. Very smart drive so far for Nebraska. Nothing silly, you don't want to make a mistake and go in giving up more points. Like to get the ball out to about the 45 yard line going in before you really go downfield. Any try in this light air, I mean, you might be able to kick a 59, 58 yarder in this air. Remember they have been kicking it deep into the end zone going in this direction too. Crouch fires out the Thunder again. He'll take the sideline and out of bounds at the 41-yard line, just short of that first down, but he stopped the clock with 20 seconds to go. Now, Josh Brown's longest field goal is 43 yards, so they've still got a ways to go before he can attempt anything in that range. Of course, factored in this air, 10%, an easy 47 yards. <laughs> Second down and crouch. Here's Collins. He'll stop it again. Got the first down. 15 seconds. And you know Thunder obviously is limping as we watch him come back every time playing yeah, he, with that injured left ankle. He has to be in there, though, because Darren Dietrich is not a good receiver. He's only caught one pass all year. Collins is the guy who catches the ball when they want to throw it. And Diedrich's one catch was for minus five yards of that. Now you can throw the ball over the middle, but it has to be enough to get a first down to stop the clock. Crouch is looking middle. Fires middle. Got it with Gibson. He should have just sat down on the first down. Ten seconds to go. Not bad, though. Still got the ball in positive territory. Probably have a chance for one more play before the field goal try. Final seconds ticking away. Crouch has got to hurry. This looks like the last play of the half. Diving grab. And time runs out. Huh. I thought Gibson got out of bounds the play before. I didn't think so. Oh. Yeah, the play before. Oh, the play That's before. why the clock stopped. Ah. It, didn't, it didn't stop. Well, we had the timer from Michigan State, <laughs> and he let her roll, baby. So it's 42-23. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack. 
Well, Coach, you broke to an early lead. Little by little, Nebraska's chipping back. What do you tell them? We just got to outscore them. We got to settle our defense down. We've given up too many big plays. And, uh, you know, we're playing against a great team, number one team in the country. And, you know, they're going to come out the second half and be spoken. We've got to come out and play the same intensity we had in the first half. And Running game was pretty effective until they moved that fifth man up onto the defensive line. Right. Right. Well, and then we still scored on it down here. So we know that. We'll work on it at the halftime. Good time. luck, Coach. Thank you. 415 yards of offense, but Nebraska answers with 335. Let's go to New York. Here's John and Terry. Brent, thanks a lot. You're looking at the Sears Trophy. This is what Nebraska is playing for coming into this game. And Terry, perhaps that's the problem. Maybe they're looking past this Colorado team to a Big 12 championship rematch against Oklahoma or the Rose Bowl. Regardless of the case, this Nebraska team has got to pull itself together. It's done. You wonder if they got the wrong video to study all week, the way they're playing. But this Colorado offense, it's a power north-south running game. Nebraska hasn't seen that all year. They're going to have to find a way at halftime to get their defense playing better because their offense can score some points. By the way, 31 points against Texas Tech. That's the most they've given up. They give up 42 and a half. We'll come back with more after a message and a word from our ABC stations. Halftime show presented by Capital One, who asks, What's in your wallet? From Times Square Stadium in New York, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. I'm guessing these are Buffalo fans that are up 42 to 23, a huge surprise over the number one team in the BCS standings. Although the way things went towards the end of the half, Nebraska with plenty of offense left. Second half still to come, don't go anywhere. Earlier today, right here on ABC in the Big 12, Texas, a team that feels they should be in a BCS bowl if they come up with this win over Texas a and Bevo is ready. Chris Sims, though, couldn't get the offense going early, gets tacked here. And then Cody Skates has his punt blocked by Roderick Babers. Tony Jeffrey recovers this one, takes it 23 yards for the touchdown. And that was about the offense early on. And Texas A&M Keith Joseph goes four yards for a touchdown. Finally, an offense gets one. Tied to seven apiece. Mark Ferris intercepted by Everett Rawls. He'll return this ball to the seven-yard line. Twelve-yard line, right? Rather, he runs out of bounds knowing he's got to end the game. And then Cedric Benson, probably just a little gravy here going in for the touchdown. Another big day for Benson, 79 yards. Well, when your defense plays so well as Texas does, something's going to happen on offense. So Cedric Benson was the guy this time having a great second half. Chris Sims, really not a great day. 16 of 33, 138 yards, but he got the win. Mac Brown says this one should put us in a BCS game. Well, I think we'll be in a BCS Bowl. We just got to hope the BCS is, uh, uh, if, if it's designed right, this football team will be there, and we're sure excited about it. The well, way he says that, if they don't get in, it almost sounds like it's not designed right. Well, I don't agree with you. <laughs> Illinois, Tennessee, or Florida, there's a lot of teams that deserve it with one loss, but nobody deserves it more than Texas. Well, how about Nebraska? Nebraska <laughs> comes out of this <laughs> game happen. with one loss, throw them into the mix. Arkansas and LSU, the things in the SEC are still wide open out in the West and the East. We know we come down to the Tennessee-Florida game, and LSU right now with a 34-25 lead over Arkansas. Rowan Davey has three touchdown passes. Well, both these teams can win the SEC West, but LSU controls its own Dusty. If they can hold off Arkansas, they've got Auburn next week. All right, you run it down. So Auburn, if they win next week, they're done. They're in LSU. They LSU's hold off this win and win next week. Yeah, then Arkansas would have to win this one and then hope that LSU beats Auburn next week. Now, Arkansas's hopes are fading fast because it looks like they're not even going to win that game. Meanwhile, East Carolina against Southern Miss in the uh, Eastern Carolina players coming after Thanksgiving and tuning up for the turkey and the roast beef and everything else that you get on Thanksgiving, getting ready to play Jeff Kelly. Six yards to Dwayne Woods. 10 to 6. East Carolina has the lead. But then David Garrard with a pitch to Richard Alston. He'll go 51 yards to Torrey Morris to take a 22 to 18 lead. A great catch and a terrific throw. Garrard, though, as they're trying to mount the comeback, he winds up sacked by Joe Henley for a 12-yard loss. And Southern Miss hangs on for the win. They go to 6-3 and three on the season. We've been talking about David Garrard forever, it seems like, but he couldn't pull this game out. Southern Miss now have locked up another bowl. You see the numbers for Jeff Kelly and Dwayne Wood. 23 carries, 106 yards. 
a touchdown and a touchdown reception as well. San Jose State and Fresno State, Marcus Arroyo has two touchdown passes. David Carr, touchdown pass and a touchdown run. This guy does not get enough mention for the Heisman Trophy. No, you know, he has thrown for more yardage than anybody else in the country. But, you know, when you lose a game, uh, you're not undefeated. Your name kind of gets pulled back. They lost to. We forgot about David Carr. A couple of losses in the middle of the season. Arizona is Arizona State. Jason Johnson, touchdown pass, touchdown run. Clarence Farmer has a touchdown run. 20 to 14 the lead there. And Cal does not end the season without a victory. They beat Rutgers today. It was 1897, the last time they did not win a game in the season. Nice for Tom Homo, who lost his job. Nice for him to finish up with a win. Yeah, Kyle Bowler, 15 of 26 for almost 200 yards. The touchdown and the interception, more importantly, they get the W. More of the Capital One halftime show in a moment. An offensive explosion in Colorado. Night has fallen here on Times Square Stadium, so when you go to bed tonight, set your alarms for at least 1 o'clock Eastern time. The biggest of the big rivalries, Ohio State against Michigan. John Saunders and Terry Bowden here on the Capital One Halftime Show. Terry, you coach in that Auburn-Alabama rivalry. It's huge, but this one seems to transcend even that. Auburn-Alabama, that's an in-state rivalry. It means so much to people within that state, but Ohio State-Michigan, it's huge. It's national. It means something passionately to people from Florida all the way to California. Just how big is the game? Take a listen to some of the coaches and players who have played or coached in the game. You put out so much in this Michigan game <laughs> that even your Rose Bowl is anticlimactic. It's not a, a love situation when it comes to Michigan. You can't deal with blue in the state of Ohio. Touchdown, Ohio State! It's just kind of a, a knockdown. You know, it's a big street brawl out there. The rivalry was just bitter. Woody would always uh, say to one of my assistants, tell Coach Jim Beckler I'm ready to meet him at the 50, because he wouldn't cross the 50 where we were warming up. I wouldn't cross the 50 where he was warming up. I found out what the rivalries were all about because I got hit so hard, I thought we were playing Indiana. We want to get uh, Cooper fired. We want to keep on beating him and beat him until he's no longer there. I think we should keep Michigan down here where they belong, just like the rest of the teams. Uh, I guarantee we'll beat Ohio State. Clemson, Michigan goes to the Rose Bowl. And I remember when we drafted Terry Glenn, it was like, yeah, but damn. Well, well we, we could have picked somebody else besides him. The fans of Michigan, they're tough. They're so close to you. You hear everything that they can say to you about yourself, about your mom, wherever else they want to talk about. You are used to it from the fans, but when the security guys are doing it, you're going, man, these guys are serious, I think. There's no way you can go into a Ohio State Michigan game and slack off for one play. Well, he's got the first, and he's got a bunch more. I don't know about in Michigan, but in Ohio, it's not accepted. You're obviously very much aware that this is the biggest game that we play at Michigan. I can assure you that you'll be proud of our young people in 310 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Terry, you notice that Jim Trestle was very careful there to say you'd be proud of our boys, not necessarily proud of their victory, but they've had this robbery since 1897. It's the 40th time the outcome could decide at least to share the Big Ten Championship. Michigan would tie with Illinois in that, but they would get the BCS berth. But probably the most telling thing is what it does to coaches. Well, John Cooper, the former coach, was 72% as a winner at Ohio State. That's phenomenal, but he was too... 10 and 1 against Michigan. That's why he's interviewing for the Indiana job today. I mean, the Kansas job today. Very first college football game I ever saw in person, 1973, Ohio State, Michigan. Doesn't get any bigger than that. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock. This is the Capital One halftime show. Colorado, what a huge surprise. Out of the gate in a hurry against the Cornhuskers. Tomorrow night in primetime on ABC's Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens. Some of you will see a good rivalry between Notre Dame and Stanford. Others will see Washington try to derail Miami's hopes for a national championship. That's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on ABC. Speaking of derailing a run for a championship, Colorado's doing that. They're doing it by running the football extremely well. As a matter of fact, they've run it well this year. 
4.6 is pretty good for a game. 9.3 in the first half is their average. Well, Garrett Barnett said this week that Nebraska has not seen a North Hill power running attack. Their success on defense at Nebraska is because of their lateral speed running sideways to sideline to sideline, but they're getting beat right between the tackles. I've seen the safeties fill outside three times and not even get blocked, and the runners at Colorado straight down the middle. If you are Frank Solich and you go in right now and you say, boys, look, we, our offense has really got it moving right now, what adjustments are you going to make to try and stop Colorado? But you don't fool with the offense at all. That's a lot of points. They'll continue to score. You get that defense straightened out. You make sure those safeties are filling the right alleys, not outside, filling inside, so you help those linebackers and linemen. All right, again, Nebraska pointing, they hope, for a match against Oklahoma. And right now, Oklahoma's got a win against Oklahoma State tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen over these last few weeks of the college football season. Right now, let's take you back out to Brent Musburger for second-half play. Coach Bob Stoops sometime in the second half here today. We're enjoying the Golden Buffalo marching band at halftime. Like you said, John, must win for Oklahoma tomorrow against Oklahoma State. Who knows what's going to happen? We'll have the second half after this message and a word from our ABC station. Most points scored against Nebraska in any half. Colorado hangs up 42 and 415 yards. Gary Danielson, can the Nebraska defense get back in this football game? Brent, it won't be easy. It's not just alignment that uh, Nebraska has to change. They're getting blocked. And it's a good football players. I think the mismatch at tight end has caused huge problems for Nebraska. Yeah, exactly. Graham is certainly one of the best in the country, and he's demonstrated it, scoring a touchdown and going up and down the field. Colorado will get the ball to start the second half and they'll bring it out on the 20 yard line. It's not like Colorado's come out and fooled them with them to get cheap touchdowns. You look at what the teams have been trying to do. Colorado 219 yards. That's a dream come true. Look at this. 26 yards for Nebraska in their option game. Couldn't be any better for Colorado's defense. It's forced Nebraska to go to their finesse game. They've thrown the ball, they've adjusted, but when Nebraska's not good with their option, they do not play Nebraska offense. So Pesavino brings him out with Purify as his running back. And he is hit right away. John Clanton, the nose man. Across, and we are joined, as I promised you, by Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops, who tomorrow has a big one against Oklahoma State at home. Uh, coach, how shocked are you that Colorado's hung a 42 on Nebraska in the first half? Well, I tell you, it's great offensive execution. It's been impressive to watch um, Colorado really executing well, and Nebraska came back and executed uh, some very good plays, too, by the end of the half. Well, stick right with us, coach, as we uh, talk to you here between snaps. Pesavino brings him up to the line. Roll, Kelsey's blocked, and he throws beautifully underneath, very accurately. And of course, uh, Bob, you didn't have to play Colorado. I'm wondering, your youngsters are probably anticipating a rematch. You know, that old look ahead kid with uh, with your youngsters down there. How do you keep them focused on Oklahoma State this week? Well, it, it's been pretty easy. We understand by winning uh, tomorrow, we'll, you know, we've got a chance to lock up the Big 12 South and, and win the Big 12 South championship. So. So that, that is motivation. We understand that. We understand we're playing a rival school here in state. So we're really uh, looking forward to competing tomorrow. All right, Coach, here's third down and one. And Purify was stopped short of the 30-yard line. So they will be forced to punt. Gary, you got a question for yeah, Coach? Yeah, Bob, you know, as a defensive coach, and I know you watch it with defensive eyes, the mix and balance that Colorado has, a quarterback that's throwing accurately and a power running game, tough to stop. You're very right, Gary. We bought, you know, I think everyone as defense uh, coaches, are, I, I've always felt that way, that a balanced offense is always more, the, uh, more difficult uh, because of the, you know, the, you know which, which is coming, the run or the pass. And, and uh, that's why even in our offense, we've continually tried to improve our running game, even though sometimes we're noted as a passing team. So Dewan Gross is uh, set to return. Low, and it'll roll dead inside the 30-yard line, and that's where Nebraska will have its uh, first possession here of the, of the second half. 
Uh, Coach, give us your uh, quarterback situation as you approach Oklahoma State and perhaps the Big 12 championship game. Really excited about Nate Hibble, the way he's come on the last three games. He's been completing 69% of his balls, about 840 yards, uh, eight TDs to three interceptions, really catching a rhythm and, and excited about that. And, and uh, we, we haven't penciled ourselves into that. We know we got to go out and compete and do well tomorrow in order to, to get that uh, birth into the Big 12 championship game. All right, Bob, here comes Crouch. Handing it off to Diedrich, the eye back who powers straight ahead. Bob, give us a little scouting report on Diedrich, number 30 for Nebraska. A uh, big, strong guy up inside. Uh, you know, when you defend Nebraska, they're as much uh, uh, finesse as they are power. Uh, they really have a number of uh, complicated blocking schemes that you continually have to read out and get in proper position. Then you have to be physical enough to compete, complete the play by tackling them once you get them in the hole. All right, here's second down and short after that nine-yard burst. Crouch with a little change-up at the line of scrimmage. Diedrich picks his way for the first down. Bob, what do you try to do against Eric Crouch when you're setting a defense to take him on? Well, your safeties, your cornerbacks have to be involved with linebackers. And again, getting in position with their blocking schemes, they try and outgap you and outposition you in their blocking schemes, and he knows how to read them. And you have to read them with them and get your secondary people to fill those holes uh, as he's looking for them and, and read out their blocking schemes. So here's first down for Crouch and Nebraska just beyond the 40-yard line. Crouch is going to pull back and look to the middle. Got it through behind him. Gibson incomplete. How do you evaluate Crouch as a passer, Bob? Well, he, he, he's uh, very capable. Uh, he does very well with his play action and boot passes. And, um, you know, I, I felt all year he's been better than he has been, you know, in his previous couple of years. And uh, he may be struggling just a little bit here today. But, uh, but overall, uh, he's very effective and, and uh, you know, capable of hurting you with the pass. I guess I shouldn't ask you about his talents as a receiver, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he does a good job getting open and, and running with it once he has it. Second down now for Crouch and Nebraska. He's back in the shotgun. Quarterback draw. He's got an alley on the left side. First down. Coach, when your team is going well, Quentin Griffin, your running back, is getting yards. You talked about being able to throw the ball, and I think you're best when you're able to run the ball. Well, sure, and we're always working to, to get better running it and always have that a part of our package. Some people insist, though, kind of like our defense tries to do that as well, insist that you're not going to be able to run it. And sometimes, even though he isn't gaining yards, he's opening up some seams and some passing yards that maybe uh, go unnoticed that, that, you know, just his presence in there sometimes still helps you on offense. So Nebraska mounting a drive is at the Colorado 47 here to start the second half. Here's Diedrich again. Made the most out of that with a strong second effort. Coach uh, Williams has had such a great year for you in that defensive backfield. Kalmus, the linebacker. My goodness, you've got a lot of great defensive players on that team. Uh, we're very fortunate to work with those young men. They are. They're excellent players. They all, they, they, Rocky and Roy, uh, particularly, have made some big plays in, in big games to make a difference. And, and Roy, in particular, the plays he's made against Texas and on down the road, uh, you know, that have helped define our season. Second down now for the Huskers. Here's the toss play to Diedrich. Can't get his day on. Sometimes, Coach, it, it's not alignment, it's not X's and O's, it's just guys ready to make tackles. It looks like Colorado has come to play. Sure, they're a very good physical football team, well coached, uh, both teams are. And, and that's why, you know, the people, the media sometimes want to pencil people into championship games or even the BCS. There's a lot of games to be played. Uh, I think all of us that compete, us coaches and players, all recognize that. You have to go out and earn it every week, and we're aware of that, and, and that's why I think we're anxious to, to play tomorrow and see what we're capable of doing. Coach, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Thank Good you. luck tomorrow, and probably we'll see you in Dallas. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Well, hopefully we can earn our way there. Thank you. You got it, Coach. Bob Stoops, who's done a great job at Oklahoma. Here on third down now is Crouch. The option, second effort, great desire by Crouch. First down across the 35. There and now our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Well, one story was right there. Crouch running over for that first down, but you can see it. Brennan's it's been big plays. Almost every play has been a gash play, an explosion play for both sides. I don't think either coach would have expected that in this game. Trailing 42 to 23. And just with the doctor order from Nebraska's offense, a drive. First down, mashing drive. 
Thunder Collins coming in motion and running well. Play fake to him. He wanted it back. Middle diving reception by Wistrom for a first down. Now it's being waved up by the linesman. I thought Wistrom had it. I thought he caught it. The linesman did not necessarily have the best angle, but he came right after it and said it was incomplete. Coming across, this is Wistrom over here. It's bootleg action away and a throwback to Wistrom. Fake to Thunder Collins, throwback. Wistrom it does not look healthy. The ball is low, and you really can't tell if he got his elbows and hands under the ball, but very, very close. Second down and 10. Thunder Collins broke wide open off that fake over to the left side. Here's your quarterback draw, left side, Clarks, 20, 15, out of bounds, inside, and at the 10 yard line, it'll be first down. And that's a quarterback that doesn't go out of bounds easily, does he? This is a game for getting into the Big 12 championship, a chance to win the national championship. It was the quarterback, Trey, counter right here watch these two guys pull this way he lines it up tailback offense right there counter tray with a running back quarterback i don't have time to stay with that guard and look at that i ain't going out of bounds no way here's your first and goal after the 25 yard run so eric crouch now starting to put some numbers up on the board He's hit in the backfield for a loss by Sean Tufts. Have to give Thunder Collins a lot of credit. He's been playing on a bad ankle. He's so important because he comes in as a second back, but lines up as a wide receiver to give that defense a different look over and over again. Gibson, Thomas, and Wistrom check in. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. Gibson goes off to the right, one-on-one -on -one with Strickland. Thomas is to the short side, the left of the formation. Play fake, Crouch got time, throws. This time, Wilson hangs on at the one-yard line. Another diving effort by Tracy Wistrom. And now the Huskers are in business. They can load up with power on this one. How about all three guys doing exactly right on one play? Lewis has got Wistrom. Look at this throw. Look at this coverage. And then watch this catch. Three guys doing exactly the way the coach wanted them to do it. Diedrich is lined up behind the two fullbacks. Davies and Crewall. It's the power out. It's David going to attack the ball. And Degray turns it over at the one yard line. He tried to go up over the top. He has fumbled twice today. Same play they ran for the touchdown. Diedrich this time goes airborne. Oh, Strickland nailed it. Number four, the corner. It was the corner coming up to meet the leaping Diedrich. Ball comes free. Colorado's got it at the one yard line after the fumble. Nebraska jumps the running back close to the goal line. They want the safety, no signal. Has the tempo of this game changed? Oh, I think Colorado's going to be forced to try to throw to get off this end zone, end line. Coming they right from the end zone. Chris Brown gets met by Shane Lee and Burrow right at the goal line. Second down and 10. Brown the power back. Straight ahead. Out to the two yard line. The combination of Brandon Drum leading the way for Chris Brown. But it's still going to be third and long.
clock cannot move fast enough for that man. Yeah, it, and it can't it must move have slowly took, enough for Solo. Right, it must have taken 15 seconds there just for everybody to unwind from that time. Here's your third down. Pesavano's going to put it up in the end zone. Got one on one with McCoy incomplete. Good coverage. Traver lays all over him. And it'll be fourth down. And now Mariscal will be forced to punt from the Colorado end zone. Craver one on one coverage. Watch him turn and look and cut off at the same time. Just enough of a peak, ball slightly overthrown, and Craver doesn't panic and get a cheap interference call. He's got to get it out of here now. Snap to foot. That's the clock. Colorado did not have 11 men on. Now they get McCoy out as one of the gunners late. Just did get it off. McPherson made a move at it. Great field position still coming up for Nebraska inside the 40-yard line. But can Nebraska finish this time? Timeout. Colorado still leads it. Heartbreak for the young runner from Canada. Turned it over a couple of times. Both times, Thunder Collins has replaced him at Iback. And number one is lined up there now. Crouch the quarterback. 39 yards away. Here's Collins. Thunders to the middle. Out to the 30-yard line. We show you how we got here. Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. On an overcast Friday afternoon, they drove to the one, and Strickland hit Diedrich, who was diving up over the top, and Fluellen, DeAndre Fluellen, a sophomore from Houston, makes the recovery. A very highly recruited defensive lineman. Second down. Thunder Collins with a corner. First down. 20. Out of bounds. Inside the red zone here they come again the big red one thing if they can put it into the end zone the only benefit for Colorado has been that they've been able to take some time off the clock but it's only the third quarter this game is still in doubt and we saw what happened what was it last time here 27 to 3 only the lead was the other direction At the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. First down and 10. Davies picks his way to fullback inside the 15-yard line. The only thing that matters in this football game now, as far as numbers are concerned, would be Nebraska's ability or inability to score points. Colorado with 42 already. Trying to hang on. Yeah, well, they, they can't give up much more either, though, Brent. They, they, I mean, a field goal, maybe, but they give up another touchdown. I don't even know if they have enough time to run their offense. They're going to go four wide, and they're going to put Wistrom slot left. He's looked very good this half. Hand it off inside to the 10-yard line. So they use the power, and Harris makes the stop. And that's a read for Eric Crouch there. He could have kept that ball, but Colorado staying very sound. They don't want number seven to run the ball. They're going to let him hand off. Part of Colorado's strategy, keep the ball out of number seven's hands as much as possible. Crouch has carried 13 times for 73 yards. They are very late getting yeah, this personnel 13. package on the field. My goodness, they're inside of 10 seconds. It's third down and three. He's got two seconds, got it off, Thunder Collins. Trying to dive up for the first down. I don't know that he got it. Right depending on line. when his knees yep. hit the ground and it'll be spotted. Again, Thunder Collins playing with that nicked ankle the whole game, his left ankle heavily wrapped. There you see it. That much. 
Here comes a huge play. Guess who's watching this carefully? Miami. Come on, I. And our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens. They're going to go up against Washington. Some of you will see the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on Stanford, ranked number nine in the BCS. So Nebraska loads up. You'd have to bet on Crouch. Fourth down and inches. Straight ahead. Crouch. Took the licking but got the first down. But he took some punishment in the process, and Colorado made him pay. Nebraska has controlled this whole quarter but have yet to put points on the board. The pace needs to be quickened for Nebraska. Now they're at the six yard line. Collins stays in. Remember they got down to the one yard line in their last possession and Diedrich fumbled diving toward the end zone when the cornerback Strickland hit him. Now they're at the six yard line. Touchdown number 58. More rushing touchdowns than any quarterback in history. He has now rushed for a touchdown in 10 of 12 games this year. And Nebraska closes in a little bit closer. Option play so dangerous at any time. We talked about it. That knockout punch can be delivered from anywhere on the field by number seven. And here is Josh Brown. Nailing the extra point. 12 point game, plenty of time to go. Tracy Wistrom gets a nice block on Lewis. Number 87 right there. Blocks down for just a count, then gets on Lewis right there. Stays with him, stays with him, stays with him, and that's enough for Crouch to get the end zone. Big Red is within 12. Can Colorado hang on? Timeout. Because of a personal foul after the extra point, Nebraska is backed up. They'll kick off with the 20. Is our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens continues with Colorado leading Nebraska 42 to 30. So the return then move up to the 20 yard line and a great kick on there. They drive him back to the nine. Colorado to the middle. Dances outside. He's quick. A penalty flag is thrown. Probably an illegal block yeah. in the back. Holding on Ricketts, the corner from Nebraska, who had contained. There was holding there. During the return, holding, 10 yard penalty, enforcing the spot of the foul, first down. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Chevy. The cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Sears. Only Sears has the brands you want, the price you need. Sears, where else? And original Coors. Nothing beats an original. We're in the land of Coors here in the Rocky Mountains, the great Rocky Mountains. Up the front, they had snow up at Vail last night. The skiers are happy. I'm sure some of them are coming in off the slopes, sitting down, seeing this score, the shot. Colorado scored 42, 42 in the first half. Most points scored in any half ever, ever, against the Big Red. And now the Buffaloes settle in. Pasadena, they've been three and out twice. Kelsey got him, incomplete. And Kelsey had chased him inside the five. 57 makes an appearance here in the second half and let us check in with Jack. Well, as you guys have been saying upstairs, the time is clicking down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. On the Colorado side offensively, what they want to do is see a quicker break out of the huddle. They want more time on the playcock so Bobby Pesavento can make some calls and some judgments at the line, depending on what type of defense he sees. What they told Pesavento is they want more tempo. Run the clock down, but more tempo at the line. Cormier and as a wide receiver. Is eaten up inside the 15 yard line by Mark Federal. A different Nebraska defense, folks, has shown up this half. Where were these guys earlier? Federal that time again comes in with his speed. Kelsey took the play on him that time, though, Brent. Bounced it outside, and then the speed can run. 
coming this way. It's a little bit of a counter action, but watch Kelsey take on the pulling guard. He takes it on, and then the bounce out. That allows the speed of the Nebraska linebackers to make the play. Instead of getting gashed up the front, up the middle, they're forcing that run wide. Ricketts checks in and look at the package. Third down and long. Pesadeno caught it on Blakes. Couldn't hang on with Ricketts in pursuit. And they are forced again to punt it away. And we check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brent here on the Burger King update. LSU against Arkansas. Rowan Davey, 37 yards to Josh Reed. Reed now with 1,494 yards receiving. That's an SEC record. They win it 41-38. And next week, LSU faces Auburn to find out who's the champion in the SEC West. A change here for Nebraska. Two punt returners, something they'll go to if they punt away from the main man. Cornelson and Gross are deep. Norris Kell pounds it. Gross fumbles. They can't advance it. It's down right there, but he coughed it up. Yeah, but it'll be a halo, and they'll get the ball back. Gross coming up to make the catch, and the Colorado player forced the fumble. My goodness. So here will be the announcement. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. Non-contact foul. Five yard penalty. First down. You can see the defender right there clearly within the two yard halo. No question. So it will be Nebraska's football. Time out. Gary, total domination by Nebraska so far this quarter. It really has three, three and outs. The offense for Colorado must continue to go because Nebraska's offense is rolling. Thunder Collins stays in. And he reaches the 37 in our Pacific Life game summary. And Eric Crouch has reached another milestone. He now has 1,034 yards rushing this season. He is only the 13th Division 1A quarterback to rush and pass for a thousand yards in a single season and he has scored again today that is 58 career rushing touchdown and Eric Crouch trying to keep this drive going Nebraska down 12 points well defended that time let's go to Jack Root. Well, Brent, when you look at a momentum game, you look for someone to spark an emotional uplift. This man, Thunder Collins, has done precisely that on the sidelines. Each time that the Nebraska Cornhuskers defense has been out, Collins has been walking up and down the sidelines, trying to get the entire team wound up. He may be playing hurt, but his leadership qualities are beginning to come out. Third down and nine. Their option formation in. And they're going to throw out of it. Slant, no. Gibson was hit by Sneed, the corner from Mesquite, Texas. Ball was slightly behind that time. Would have been a very tough play. Sneed came in and cleaned it up perfectly that time, but Crouch threw it behind the receiver. It has come to fourth down. anything but putt right now. A lot of time in this football game. Here's Larson talking to his center. So far here today, Garrison has delivered the ball perfectly. As he does again. Angled away from Holloway. Got it. A beautiful punt that time. Well, Sunday night, Brian Erlacher and the Chicago Bears will need to tame NFC Central rival Minnesota to remain atop the division. Sunday night football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Bears and the Vikings. Chicago on the comeback this year. Surprised a whole lot of folks, haven't they? As Colorado has shocked everybody here today, but 
They're under fire now. Remember what Gary told you. Three possessions, all three and out. And no field position here either. Must have been on the throw on first down. Not noted as a scrambler. It's open, first down. Pesavano takes it out at the 29-yard line. Gary, you got to give him a lot of credit, the senior on that play. He really didn't have much choice for that 22-yard scramble. He stayed in there because his two crossing receivers bumped into each other. He wanted to go to Graham that time, but yes, stayed in the pocket, stayed calm, and then scrambled up for a huge play, a huge first down. Watch, crossing Grise, trying to pick for Graham. Boom! They run into each other, and there's no option but to run. Chris Brown, the power back for Colorado, and another first down, and here they come again. Four different tailbacks in their career have run over 100 yards in a single game. Chris Brown did it against Colorado State, 21 carries, 121 yards, and he has come through as that change-up back because Johnson has been injured. Purify in as the running back. He's behind Pesavano. Motion fullback. And here's Purify to the middle again to the 40 yard line before Shanley makes the stop. 18 more yards, and let's go back to what Terry Bowden said at the intermission. Where are the safety? Where are the safeties? Where are the defensive alignment? They run right up the middle right here. Safeties. Here's a safety back here. Here's a safety back there. Look at that gash. That's a gash against that defensive line. First down at the 41-yard line. Brown back in as running back. Here's Brown. Burrow hanging on, and uh, he picks up a couple of yards. Talking about the safeties, Philip Bland, who would have been a starter at strong safety today, out of the state of Colorado, is injured and not able to do anything about this. Yeah, you really don't expect your safeties to be stopping the ball in the middle right here. You can go eight-man fronts, but those defensive linemen have to help you, and those linebackers have to help you stop those plays. That offensive line for Colorado is winning this football game. Fourth quarter belongs to who? Colorado or Nebraska? Back with it after this message and a word from our ABC stations. One quarter to go. Colorado leading Nebraska by 12 points. And with the football, in the last two games here at Boulder, Colorado has outscored Nebraska 38 to nothing in the fourth quarter. But remember, in the last one played here, they surrendered the winning touchdown in overtime after missing a field goal that would have won it. So Pesavino comes out now for second down. Pesavino steps away, hit on the delivery, juggling complete gross. Almost picked it off on the juggle. Cormier, the intended receiver. Bedrill and Kelsey had good pressure on Pesavento that time. Getting back in the, in the thing, here comes these guys from this side. Number nine right in the middle. He gets in the, in the pile, watch him get inside right there to put pressure. The ball slightly behind, and that one by Gross could have been picked up. They are taking Booker out in third down situations. The safety is the fourth leading tackler who has only one stop today, has been coming out. Here it is now, third down. Pesavano in trouble. Neatly steps away. Fires up the man incomplete. Oh, he had Brunson wide open. There's a penalty flag, however. Hollowell was the intended receiver, and a flag was thrown. I think he might have been trying to go to Matt Brunson, number 15, and he badly overthrew it. 
Pass interference on the defense. Maximum penalty is 15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. Hollowell was the guy who got held trying to come back for that ball. Pesabeto waved to Brunson that he was open. Let it run right here. Pesabeto gets pressure, and when he comes out, I think he's trying to go to the guy who fell down on the play. Right here is who I think he's trying to go to the ball to. That's Brunson. He badly overthrows it to him to a wideout guy. The ball sails, but way back here is where the holding play goes. Wow. Not even throwing the ball, and they get an interference call. And we've got Lucier, the center, injured at the 45-yard line, number 78, the transfer from Northwestern. And he has played a whale of a football game, really has. along with Rogers, Gerard, Hage, and Bates in that offensive line. And Brent, a little hidden stat about success for a team. They've had the same five starters for every game this year for Colorado. Now, Gerard, number 65, the big guard, has played center in the past. Looks like they're going to come in with Ryan Gray. Now, Schlechter also had to come off with an injury. Now they have Booker lined up at a cornerback, Nebraska, and he's going to chase the fullback on first down. Brown and Booker trying to hang on, and he made more yards. Booker couldn't bring him down. He's inside the 10 yard line. That's 15 yards. Again, that blocking on the offensive line. Look at this gas play again coming right at you. Get a sprint, run right through. Look at this. This is against Nebraska. You don't even see anybody in the picture here till this. Chris Brown gets into the secondary, and Booker, who's playing man-to-man -man coverage, comes in and has to hold on for dear life. Brown comes in at nose tackle for Nebraska. They motion that fullback again to keep Booker on the run. Purify on cutback. And he slipped through close to the five-yard line. That was Shanley trying to bring him down. What we have seen is that the big red defenders have been unable to make the stop with the first hit. And Colorado slipping very close to that five-yard line. It'll be second down. Now, remember what Coach Barnett told us. We want to try to tire them down in the fourth quarter. We're playing at altitude. It's a very emotional game. We want to wear away at them. Brown in the backfield. Play fake Pesavano. He's played a whale of a game. He'll throw this one away. Penalty again in the end zone. It's on Gross, I believe. Gross and Hollowell are checked out. It was Gross and Brunson, I think, were locked up in the end zone. The ball was thrown away, but it might have been a holding call on the play. Holding on the defense on an eligible receiver before the pass is thrown. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Ryan Bingham checks into the goal line. When you can, you can run the ball, watch these offensive linemen go this way, slow one way, little play action pass, get it into the end zone, I and mean, he just had to throw it away. There was no one open right there, but they called the holding into the end zone, and it was pretty obvious. Bobby Pesavento has played a whale of a football game, has not made the big mental mistake, has stepped away from trouble, has thrown the ball accurately. toward the end zone, and he was just short of it. It'll be down to the one-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. And he slipped on that one, or he could have scored easily. Nice one-two combination with Purify and Brown. Great game plan from Gary Barnett to keep two big, healthy backs to go north and south against this Nebraska team. No one has ever tried it. No one has run this type of a game plan against Nebraska all year. You think that they wouldn't want to saddle up behind Rodgers and Gerard yep, here yep. for a second and goal? Number 71 and 65. <laughs> Going in that direction. Touchdown! They go behind the big horses. And Colorado puts a big six up on the board here in the fourth quarter. Same play that they scored on earlier in this football game. 
Block down, block down, and bring the big guy. That's good power football. Here's Flores now for the extra point. Nails it. And so today, Chris Brown, the transfer from Northwestern, has scored four touchdowns. Timeout. Folsom Field, and look at the elevation, folks. 5,300 feet right now, and it could be wearing a little bit. This is a key play when Diedrich tried to get over the top from the one-yard line. He fumbled. Nebraska was dominating. After that, they were able to score. They cut it to 12. Then Colorado took over and calmly cut up the Cornhusker defense again. For the day, 494 yards of offense. 494 for the Buffaloes. Deep is Josh Davis. Line drive, it'll have to come out on the 20 yard line. And Brome has done so well with those kickoffs. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler are bringing you ABC Sports presentation to college football. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns, Dodge. Beachwood aged Budweiser with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only the king of beers and Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Nebraska start having to get in and out of the huddle quicker now. Down 19 points and the two touchdowns. Penalty flag is thrown. Illegal substitution on the offensive team. Breaking the sideline huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty. I thought I saw the substitution come on the sidelines with their uh, package, but they must have uh, broken out of that huddle with too many. Everybody does it. Put 12 or 13 people in the huddle, but if you take a step towards the field, you're going to get called. First down at 15. Crouch. Thunder Collins on a screen. To the 21-yard line, and they pick up of two after all of that, huh? Nebraska needs to get into a hurry-up mode. They can't allow now for these 10 and 12 seconds between each play, standing around figuring out what play. They need two touchdowns, they need two extra points, going probably for two both times. I think they should be in their no huddle already. Second down and nine. Crouch looking for Gibson, and he went down. Incomplete. The coaches on the Nebraska sideline won an interference. Gibson went down. He was the intended receiver. Yeah, he caught his legs, I believe, with Strickland that time. I think it was Strickland. Both guys are lipping on the play. He was running a post corner coming in and out. Gibson, number eight, comes inside, trails Thomas, and as he comes back out, kind of just blows a tire. I don't know if he tripped over anybody. A personnel substitution of four players right now with a uh, yeah, Strickland injured was player, limping. Strickland, yeah, down. He, he was limping. I, I thought maybe he caught his toe or foot with Gibson, but obviously he just blew a tire himself. So we'll take a break. 11.56 to go. Time out. ABC Sports. Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens continues from Boulder, Colorado for the Buffaloes upsetting the top ranked team in the BCS standings. Third down and 10. Crouch to the middle. Penalty flag. First down, but there is a penalty flag on the play. From the linesman's call, it's usually holding on the end man on the line of scrimmage. I think Justin Bannon, number 97, got held on that play. Bannon, who they wanted 10 plays from, is still in there in the fourth quarter of the football game. starting to run down on Crouch's dream. 
which was to win a national championship. But to have a shot, they would have to win this game and again next Saturday night in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in Irving, Texas. Only 11.49 left. Third and 19. Thomas is the motion man. Play fake. That is high. Intercepted by Lewis. Lewis at the 20. 15. 10. Out of bounds. Inside the 10. And that could be the knife in the heart. Nebraska was forced to gamble. Third and long. They had to go for the first down. Throwing into the teeth of the zone. Very, very difficult for this offense to do. I think this is Lewis right here. We're going to get a crossing route and watch him watch the quarterback on the play. Lewis playing safety. He stays back. He stays back. And he sees that crossing route right there. And he watches the quarterback and cuts across to make the play. Emotional, a leader, and smart. Great combination. Chris Brown in as running back. Whistle. They were bringing the play clock down. Game on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. That'll cost them five on the game clock now. 11 38. Barnett in Colorado leading by 19 and there are such huge implications not only here but all around the country as far as the BCS is concerned folks this could be heartbreak hotel for Brigham Young and we will show you as the rest of this game unfolds it is now first down backed up to the 13 yard line here's the toss play to Brown breaks a tackle touchdown touchdown that's five for Chris Brown Touchdowns from Chris Brown in a football game and putting over 300 yards rushing on this football team, Nebraska, today. So Chris Brown goes for the record. Five touchdowns. And they will go for two. The number sequence says you go for two. It's intercepted live ball. Booker will be thrown down in the end zone by Graham. And that is the first horrendous pass that Pesavento has thrown all day long. But they will take it because Colorado still leads it 55 to 30. Chris Brown ran right through Jeremy Schleck, the number 56 this time. Takes the toss. Big number 56 is right there. The nose tackle runs right through the nose tackle to score a touchdown. A 25-point lead by a 10-point underdog. This is one, folks, that the odds makers blew off the map. They were so long on this guy, it was unbelievable. It'll come out on the 20. I'm going to take it to BCS. Oklahoma, folks, can get back and defend its title. Oklahoma now must handle Oklahoma State at home and then win the Big 12 championship, and now they will be in the driver's seat for Pasadena. Florida still has a chance to get there. Oregon needs some help. Now your middle five teams. They all need a lot of help. These teams, of course, could get the BCS Bulls. Illinois trying to get there. But go to the next five. Here's today's story. Colorado is 15. With this win, they figured a move ahead of BYU. BYU had to finish at least 12th to be eligible for an invitation to the Fiesta Bowl. This is not what the Cougars wanted here today. First down and 10 now for Crouch in the middle school. Gibson Lucy. 
Shotgun formation. Down this many points. Still not in a hurry up mode. Not a no huddle mode, but they're in a little bit of a hurry up mode. It has been a disaster for a defense that usually prides itself in being able to stop the run. Gary, a great name, has checked in for the injured Strickland for Colorado as it's going to be first down for Nebraska. And first, let's tell you about this Monday nighter. And it's going to be a dandy. The Buccaneers and the Rams. Folks don't get any better than that, except that you stop the Rams in St. Louis. And the Tracy Wistrom's brother, Grant, this will be a defensive end for the Rams. Their odds on right now to win the NFC. Terrence Wood, 23, goes to the right side of the defense. He's the young man. Crouch trying to get at him. Deflected incomplete. And Thomas had a blanket thrown on him by Wood, number 23. And folks, Terrence Wood is the grandson of one of the greatest NFL defensive backs ever. Willie Wood played on the first two Super Bowl championship teams with the Green Bay Packers. What a heritage. And here is young Terrence now in for the injured Strickland at corner. He's worked his way up to a nickel back in the third corner, obviously, on this football team. Joy Johnson, nice block of that pass by Crouch. Second down. High and incomplete. Cornelis of the target. And now it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. It's been a couple of fumbles, turnovers at cost. It started out the second half, Nebraska trying to get in this football game. But then, this one a little later, last gasp, third and 20, and that set up the last touchdown by Chris Brown, his fifth of the game, Brett. Never thought I'd say that. Especially against the Big Red. What a game Pesimino has played. He's our MVP. Got to give it to him. Calm, cool, collected. And so much improved from the time we saw him. Third down. Intercepted. Picked off by Joey Johnson. Inside the 35-yard line. Sean Tufts was right there to get that thing, and Johnson gets the rebound. Coming across to Gibson. Gibson says, I think I'm covered on this one. Watch Tufts come into picture right there. Charge it loose. Johnson grabs it, and boy, oh boy. Fourth turnover of the game for Nebraska. It's hard to believe. Four turnovers in the game, but that's really not the story of the game. 507 yards of offense. Yes, exactly. The story of this I game. think so. 305, Gary. Rushing. Most allowed by Nebraska since 1954 against Oklahoma. And it's going to be a sad return to Lincoln for Frank Solich and the Cornhuskers tonight. If I could give an MVP to also, I'd give it to that offensive line for Colorado. They were magnificent in this game. Yes, they were. But the leader and the difference has been Pesavano replacing the injury of Craig Oaks. Brian, can he get number six? And we asked Pesavento about his improvement as the Buffalo quarterback. Just getting more uh, developed in this offense and just figuring out, you know, how simple this offense really is and just finding check downs and just taking what the defense gives me. And I think that's what's led to, you know, having a good percentage. I'll tell you one team that will be paying attention tomorrow, the Sooners of Oklahoma, having watched what happened to Nebraska here today. They know they cannot look beyond to the Big 12 championship game and next Saturday night. They've got to tend to business first. And then worry about this suddenly dominant Colorado team. Here comes Brown again. Touchdown. Six. Six touchdowns for Brown. There will be no losing on the final play today for Colorado. They took care of business early. They did not let this one come down to the closing minutes. 
And if you're looking for the coach of the year in the Big 12, folks, he's on the Colorado sideline. They lost to Fresno State, and the writers in this state want to run him right back to Northwestern. But this team hung together. And in their biggest game of the year, they put a 62 on Nebraska. And this guy used to play for Northwestern. <laughs> he came with Gary. Good move. Not bad. Time out. Your heart just goes out to that young Nebraska fan. And I have not changed my opinion today of Nebraska fans in football. They're some of the greatest fans in the world. They'll be back, young man. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of Nebraska fans that would like to do that. They're just a little older right now. Ever. 62. Colorado put on them here today. Coming out of the end zone. Why not? to the 21 yard line and we got more abc sports thanksgiving feast presented by siemens continues tomorrow ohio state takes on marquise walker and michigan then at 8 eastern 5 pacific it's that highly anticipated rematch of number 11 washington and number two miami some of you will see notre dame take on number nine stanford and ball foul personal foul on the return team 15 yard penalty first foul. troy hassabrook just a late cheap shot showing his frustration at the end of the game. That's the second one Nebraska's had here late in this fourth quarter. What a week this has been for Colorado. Stats man George Hill reminds me that earlier this week Colorado won its first ever men's NCAA cross country title. They beat Stanford by one point. I believe that was down in Georgia. So congratulations to the cross country team. For and their as first hard as it title. is to believe the Colorado offense actually ran further today. <laughs> First down. Interesting way to look at that. Here is Dieter. And the Buffaloes swarm all over. 923. If time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Carmel postgame report featuring scores and highlights. Uh, from across the country. So so many storylines here. Uh, Gary, what uh, what hits you uh, well, right off the top what of this game? What hits me, two things, is first of all, something always happens in November and December in these things, don't they? You said that this morning at breakfast. I, I said somebody's going to lose. Who is it going to be? Nebraska today, and I don't know if we're done yet. Number two is, it looks like Eric Crouch, he does not have the great statistics anyway, is probably looking at a Heisman that's just going to slip through his fingers. He had to win them all, I believe, Did and you? I think now he's probably out of it. Did you tell me that he's on the cover of Sports Illustrated this week? He is. Wow. Real huh? big picture. Real nice picture. <laughs> oh, he's such a fine young man. And uh, the injured player is Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis, who's been one of the stars here today, shaken up and, uh, and helped up. I, I can't tell you folks through the years because I doubt that we'll do another. Well, I shouldn't say that. We don't know. Nebraska would still be a candidate for the. Uh, for the Fiesta Bowl, depending on what happens, you bet right, they would be. Right. I, but I was going to point out how, how good it is to deal with the Nebraska, and Eric Crouch in particular, how generous he is with his time for all the media people when they uh, when they show up. And, uh, of course, he, he was dreaming of a national championship. He kept saying the national championship is the key goal. And, uh, here he is to the 20-yard line. You know that, folks, let's take you back to the last time that Colorado ever won. It was Lincoln and Eric B. Enemy. He was the star running back. He fumbled five times in that game. But in the fourth quarter, B. Enemy scored four touchdowns, covered a total of only 11 yards. And that was the last time, you go back to 1990, a team that won a share of the national championship. Now the running backs coach, you know who his position coach was that day, folks, in Lincoln? Gary Barnett. And he's the link. The last time he was here, they won. He comes back this year, they win. Four down to one, and what a job he's done with these running backs. Crouch breaks free. 40 yard line, 50. Crouch looking for daylight, comes down the sideline. He'll get pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Gary Crouch said, Not so fast, Mr. Danielson. Don't count me out that quickly. That's 70 yards for the score. 
Second year in a row, Eric Crouch has put over 100 yards rushing and 100 yards passing on this Colorado team. But in this game, Colorado says, okay, nice job, nice run. Doesn't hurt as bad as last year. He's such a threat, but today, when it mattered, early in this football game in the first quarter, Nebraska could not free him. A thousand yards plus of offense here today. The difference, Colorado's been able to close. 62 to 30, here's TV. And he slams his way to the six yard line. There's our elevation. I talked about that Nebraska had to save some fuel for the fourth quarter. Well, didn't really matter. They didn't really need it. The game was over at almost the start of the fourth quarter when Colorado scored that first touchdown. That really broke the broke the back of this Nebraska team. I think Pesavento's scramble really changed the game out of the end zone. Option, but second touchdown of the game. And remember now he has scored more rushing touchdowns than any quarterback in history. He now has. 59. Option left side. You're going to see the lead back. Just go outside. They take the pitch away up here. Goes into the end zone. He doesn't kind of dance around. He just says, uh uh. Lower the shoulder. Walk in, Eric Brown. Going to have to go for two. Seven fourteen to go. And they go for two here. They load the power line. Deep with the eye back. Crouch keeps it. He's going to be short. Ninety-eight points put on the scoreboard here today. An arousing performance so far by a ten-point underdog. <laughs> So next Saturday night, you'll see these Buffaloes again in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. It'll be Colorado against either Oklahoma or Texas. If OU handles Oklahoma State tomorrow in Norman, they'll be there against Colorado. And wouldn't that be a great matchup with Oklahoma's defense against this Colorado offense? Oh, you wouldn't want to miss that one, folks. And what will Gary Barnett come up with? against that defense. How about just more of the same? You can run the ball, you can throw the ball to the tight end, you've got a quarterback that is as accurate as Pesavento has been. I like that against any defense, especially that tight end. If something should happen to Oklahoma, then of course Texas, which came on in the fourth quarter to put away the tough Aggies today, down at Texas A&M, they would be the representative of the South. At any rate, I've been there, covered several of them, and uh, it's always a great event, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. They're going to play this one at Texas Stadium. Here's the pooch kick fielded at the 30-yard line. Well, Gary, here is the Dodge drive summary. Last three times, you see Colorado. I said they needed to score. They did it, that 93-yard drive when Pesavento came out of his own end zone on the scramble, I think was the key play of this half. Remember, Graham bumped into each other, came in, but three straight touchdowns because they were getting tired on defense. Gets into the end zone, nobody there. It was not a design play. Pesavento says, I gotta do it, I come out, and that really opened up everything for this Colorado team. We check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brian, when you look at Bobby Pesavento's numbers, six foot five, 230 pounds, you would think that the NFL would be lusting for this young man. But they really don't project him being a real NFL prospect, maybe as a free agent. That has bothered Bobby Pesavento. And when I talked to him before the start of the game, he said, I've known since I was given the nod as the starting quarterback here that this game was going to be my opportunity to showcase my abilities to NFL scouts. He said, it's the day after Thanksgiving. 
They don't play until Sunday. There's going to be a lot of people in the NFL watching me today. I think he's proven his point. Absolutely, Jack. 6.25 to go. We reach the top of the hour. That's the running back, Brown, who scored six times for Colorado. For those of you who have just joined us as we run a few minutes over, that score is accurate. 62 to 36. Nebraska going to call a timeout here. And uh, their chances for a national championship have evaporated here this afternoon in Boulder, Colorado. The young man who transferred from Northwestern, Chris Brown, has scored six, count of six touchdowns for Colorado here today behind an awesome offensive line. Rogers, Gerard, Lucier, Hayes, and Bates blew open the holes, and Chris Brown, who was rested for this game, did the rest. Don't forget Bobby Purify also. He started that game out with that long run. He also went over 100 yards in this football game. Two backs over 100 yards. Brown was late, but Purify had a tremendous start of this football game. At first drive, he picked up the blitz with Nebraska so good at it, and the next play they pop him for the touchdown. He got him off and rolled. Well, the numbers are just incredible here today. 530 for Colorado. And um, the Colorado offense dashes onto the field here to bring down the last 613 of this game. Brown looking for more, folks. Looking for more. There's a late penalty flag. Thrown by the back judge. Same play that Colorado used on the goal line to score three touchdowns. They come with it and they say, listen, they haven't stopped us all day. Let's just pull Gerard around and run Chris Brown behind him. This is Barnett's third year at Colorado. In year four at Northwestern, the Wildcats rose from the ashes and went to the Rose Bowl. He came in here and said return the to dominance. Was still in bounds when he was hit there as far there's no personal foul for a hit out of bounds. Disregard the flag. But a year ago Colorado had bitten off a schedule that was too tough for Barnett. And Colorado was buried. And people began to question whether or not he could turn the show around in Boulder. I think Gary Barnett and his coaching staff have proven here today that they indeed could turn around the program here in Boulder and the return of the dominance is a soft they do with another penalty flag and purify in is the running back. Here is Colorado a year ago from three and eight to eight and two and about to become nine and two and play for the first time for the Big 12 championship. And with what we've seen here today, I wouldn't count them out of that no, game they, either. They can play with anybody. They're not, you know. Brent, you mentioned the theme that Gary Barnett said. I want to return to dominance for Colorado football. He worked for Bill McCartney. He left. He came back. It's been returned to respectability. But until he beat Texas, Oklahoma, or Nebraska, it really wasn't returned to dominance. Today, I think you can say that Oklahoma football is back, and they've got a lot of good players coming back next year. Including Craig Oaks, their best football player, quarterback, didn't even play this game. However, they lose three first round draft choices. And that always shows up, no matter what anybody says, folks. Those two offensive linemen and Graham are going to be gone. Jack Root Strickland was hurt. They're going to need even the Big 12 title game. What do you hear down there? Well, Brent, the latest we've been told is a preliminary uh, diagnosis is not good. It's a torn hamstring. Uh -oh. They will have to investigate a little further after this game to be ter to determine just what is whether it's a torn or strained hamstring. And that's their best corner. And when you talk to the people about Colorado, if they said we're short one guy, we're short maybe one corner, and they've lost their best one. Now they may be short two corners. And one other point, here's the toss play to Purify. You see this play. Broke the tackle and made his way to the foot. One other point about Strickland, folks. When Nebraska appeared to have momentum going all its way in the third quarter, remember it was number four who came up over the top and hit Diedrich 
and jarred the ball loose as Diedrich was attempting to vault into the end zone. The young man made one of the biggest plays of this game. Good point, and that was on first down and goal, too. You know, they have to match up against Oklahoma, Brent, with all those receivers and already short of corner. That's a tough matchup. Nine. One, 99, Third down. Still a little bit short. In our final four minutes. Now here is the play. And it was indeed a key play. There is number four coming in underneath and jarring the ball loose. Flewellen with the recovery for the Buffaloes. And now the young man may not be able to play in the championship game because of that hamstring. That's you, just a tough, tough break. Do you run the play again? Do you run the play over here? Same play they've been doing. They're in that formation. You block down, run to the right, and pull number 65 right here. Give it to Drum. <laughs> Fourth down. There's the play again. And they broke a tackle. Brown inside the 30-yard line. He's been unstoppable. Broke the same tackle he did for the touchdown. Jeremy Schlechta is in the set backfield. Number 56, same play all day. Lock down, pull around, big nose tackles there. Schlechta, number 56, runs right through it. And Brown, too strong in this game for this defense. Now you got to look at Brown trying to go for 200. I know someone set up here he's only 16 yards away. On first down, you know I got a moment here, so let me let me thank a lot of folks, and uh, especially our entire crew, those who spent their Thanksgiving away from their families and here with us to to bring you this football game. I can't tell you how much we appreciate the efforts of everybody. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, the coordinating producer of ABC's College Football, and the producer today, Bob Goodrich. Our director is Larry Cam, the TD, the technical man, Monty Poling. The associate producer is Mitch Green, the associate director Brian Fay. What's sucking down here now? And 12. Brown to the 25. And uh, some more folks. Uh, the director of production for us, Bob Toms, who does an outstanding job. And our production assistants who are on top of their game, Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott, the computer statistician, and happy anniversary to him and his wife, Anthony Holman from Big Day. Uh, home game next week. Our technical manager, Mark Towie. Our production manager, what a great job she did arranging for the special Thanksgiving dinner last night. Christy Bravey and telecommunications. Jeff Caius, George Hill at the stats, Brian Mulvison back from Maui and Tan and on top of his game as our spot. Third down here. They're gonna run Brian again. First down. First down for Brown, and uh, he's just had an unbelievable day. So no surprise, today's Chevrolet players of the game. And number 22 is certainly one of them, Chris Brown, who's now rushed for 198 yards and six touchdowns. He is two yards short. He wants out, but they're telling him he's two yards short from the two head. He's like, I can go. I can go. give me just give me a breath here. Just one breath. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side, we're going to go with Eric Crouch. Played his heart out. Didn't work out right. Colorado jumped him early. He had 162 yards rushing and two touchdowns. That's a pretty good day's work for a quarterback. Purify replacing Brown. You know, on the, on the depth chart, Chris Brown is listed fourth strength. Can you imagine that? Portland Johnson, Marcus Houston, Bobby Purify ahead of him, and this guy's your number four? Well, folks, there you have it. Now, there is uh, just, just so we make sure that you understand that that young man was not Strickland over there, but this one is on the uh, on the sideline and so Strickland and uh, hopefully he will be able to come back what a great play he made today key play of the game 
So there we have it, just a huge upset. 62 points for Colorado. Gary Barnett beats Nebraska, and the goalpost on the left side is down already. It didn't take him but seconds. And I'm sure the one on the right is going to come down, too. One goal post down, and folks, that's about the quickest I've ever seen. And let's go down to Jack Aroo. Coach, what can you say? Congratulations. We said, uh, well, you know, we thought, thought we'd play like this. We didn't know it'd end up like this, but, uh, you know, our guys have just believed they want to go to Dallas, and uh, we found a way to get there, I guess. Back at the beginning of the season, the upset at the hands of Fresno State, this team got together in the locker room, and you pulled together as a group. Yeah, there's no question that uh, that was a big game, but we were a good team going into that game, and we were a good team coming out, and we just didn't let it bother us, you know. We just hung together and overcome injuries, and, you know, tonight we just played our best. It's a good thing it's a Friday game. You can let them have 24 hours to celebrate. <laughs> now you got to go up against Oklahoma. That's all right. We'll worry about them on Sunday. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach. Jeff. Yeah, Oklahoma, if they win, if they don't, if they lose too, then it'll be Texas. Once again, our final score, Colorado 62, Nebraska 36. Can you believe it? ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Don't forget, more college football tomorrow. This is ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. So long, everybody. From Boulder, Colorado, the party is underway. College Game Day serves up Rivalry Week, Part 2, next. College Game Day is presented by Discover Card, proud sponsor of college football's premier pregame show. Well, last night's Bedlam in Boulder with repercussions everywhere that BCS title contenders exist. There is the shocking final score. A funny thing happened on the road to the Big Red rematch in Big D. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Welcome to College Game Day, home for the holidays. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet. As stunning a game as we've ever seen, something I think we never thought we'd see, a Nebraska team just physically manhandled and run over. We'll get to that in just a second. You get a Colorado team fueled by five straight excruciatingly close losses to Nebraska, issued a bit of a challenge. They said that we play power football. We're going to come right at Nebraska and challenge them the way nobody has. Big Red certainly not up to the challenge at Folsom Field yesterday. They arrived number one of the BCS with perhaps the Heisman frontrunner in Eric Crouch. But in a scoreless game, Buffalo strike first, little misdirection, Bobby Purify exploding up the middle, no linebackers, no safeties, early lead for the Buffs, Lee. No nothing, Wayne Lucier, watch this center, watch him come up right here, bounce off of one man, makes the block on the linebacker, tremendous blocking by the offensive line of Colorado. CU's defense made some big plays early. Kirk also helped by this critical fumble by Darren Dietrich. A lot of emotion in this game early. The Colorado defense flying around, and this is exactly what they wanted to do, capitalize on a turnover, and they'll get that opportunity after this. Craig Oak still injured, so the senior backup, Bobby Pesavento, to a future NFL tight end, Daniel Graham. They couldn't cover him all day. Uh, there's an argument around the country who has the best tight end in a great year. Daniel Graham stated his case Forget yesterday. Forget about it. Chris Brown, number three in the depth chart at tailback, the former Northwestern running back who came with Gary Barnett. Look at the blocking up front, though. Again, the blocking up front, the linemen are doing a good job. I want to know where the safeties were all day yesterday for Nebraska. It wasn't just the linebackers. Where were the safeties? And, Lee, look at the poise of Pesavento. Here's Derek McCoy again, just running pretty free. What they did is they crossed Pete against man-for-man -man coverage, and they gave the receiver, McCoy, a chance to rub off. Is that the Nebraska defense? Brown just standing up, just walks in the end zone against the vaunted black shirts. Then Nebraska's offense would get going. Darren Dietrich fakes the pitch, races into the end zone. They missed the PAT, but the Huskers back within 19, plenty of time to go before halftime. 
It was a 35-16 game when Brown, who had eight yards in the previous three games combined, rushes 36 yards for his third touchdown. Uh, you'll see the linebackers get caught up. This is just a simple counter. It's nothing fancy. The backside guard and tackle come around. They pin him. Linebacker, look at Willie Amos, who's coming up as a safety. You think he wanted anything to do with uh, Chris Brown on that play? Nebraska had momentum at the goal line. Dietrich tries to go up and over. He fumbles. This is the third quarter, and the Huskers are making a run. Now, they got the ball back, however, and score. Eric Crouch keeping it on the option. All of a sudden, about four minutes to play in the third quarter. It's a 12-point game. See you in trouble. Huskers with momentum. But then Colorado goes on a 93-yard drive. They just sucked the will out of Nebraska's defense. Brown with another touchdown. Had things in command. And then Eric Crouch, when you have to kind of grab yeah. back for Nebraska, you got trouble. But when you get down big like this, and it's in obvious passing situations, they're in trouble. Lewis, one of the best safeties in the country, makes the big play for the Bucs. This is touchdown number five for Chris Bound, barreling in most points ever scored against Nebraska. Some respect for the Buffaloes. Everybody who doubted us, who did not pick us, we're going to Dallas. We're going to see Oklahoma and Dallas. Well, that's what really the disappointing part of it is, is because you come out there and uh, you're prepared and then things don't uh, go your way. Colorado uh, took care of the ball very well, didn't make uh, very many mistakes. And uh, we had some mistakes that really hurt and cost us. Uh, that is an understatement. Most points ever allowed by Nebraska. They had 42 points and a half. That's the most. 28 and a quarter. Six rushing touchdowns by Chris Brown. Bobby Purify also had a buck 54. So 352 yards for Colorado's second and third string tailbacks <laughs> coming into this game. It's one thing to outpass Nebraska, to outrun them. We've seen that. Yeah. I have never seen a team go up and kick sand in the oh. black shirt's face like that. That was shocking. No one. No one has ever done it. And all the times I played Nebraska, we never could get a first down, much less do what they did. <laughs> but this is what Colorado did. They had a brilliant offensive game plan. They split the line wider than normal, and then split the Nebraska defense, and then ran for daylight. But another loser yesterday was Oklahoma, because I think as good as Oklahoma's defense is... They will have a much more difficult time stopping that kind of a varied attack by Colorado than they would the one-dimensional Nebraska team. I think Oklahoma lost also because they got to play that Colorado team now. Yeah, if the same Colorado oh. team shows up Woo. to Dallas, you're right. That is a completely different offensive attack than they would have seen uh, if they were playing Nebraska. I agree. The game plan for Colorado was outstanding. But Nebraska's defense... All the years anybody's ever watched Nebraska, these holes were 10, 15 feet wide that Chris Brown and Bobby Purify were walking up through until they got touched. Maybe it was the second or third tier of the defense once they got into the safeties. Gary Barnett deserves a lot of credit. Who would have thought with all the injuries that they've had, this team is 9-2. and two. They're going to Dallas with a shot at the Big 12 championship. Gary Barnett is doing a fantastic job in Boulder. Got to be the Big 12 coach of the year. Yep. You know, some of the Buffaloes said Nebraska didn't seem to want it that much. That Roy Williams of Oklahoma, we talked to last night, said obviously Colorado wanted it more. That's a it big sure question, like though. Why did Nebraska not want it more in that situation? Okay. Okay. When you live up there in the college football stratosphere, like the Oklahomas and Nebraskas, you have high goals and you have big dreams. And the nature of the sport, it can all go bye-bye very suddenly. You catch a hot team, you forget to bring your A game. The hot team yesterday was Colorado. They had been ripped locally. The Gary Barnett taken apart after a loss to Fresno. His slogan, return to dominance, had been mocked. No mocking right now. Steve Cyphers reports from Boulder on the suddenly changing fortunes on both sides. Here comes Brown again. Touchdown. Six touchdowns for Brown. It's just a matter of who wanted it more. And like I said, nobody in the country gave us a chance to do what we did this weekend. So, you know, we shocked the world. We knew we could beat Nebraska. Everybody else didn't do it. We believed in ourselves, and we knew we could do it. For all the Colorado chaos, for all the Rocky Mountain madness on the field long after the game was over, it was a quiet, perhaps a disbelief, not 30 yards away. It's really tough to talk about because that really never happens to us. Um, you know, I can't remember the last time that uh, somebody put that many points uh, against us. I would never thought that anyone in the, in the country could run the ball on us. And they did a good job of running the ball on us, and I was just shocked. I don't think shocked is, uh, is maybe the right word because um, uh, it can happen to anybody. Uh, but uh, we had played so well throughout the course of the year. 
that I did not see this game getting out of hand. You can't lay it on just one factor. I think, you know, we, we, we come in this, this game as a team and we're leaving it as a team, so we're not blaming it on, you know, just the run. You know, it was a lot of things that everybody could have done to make this game a lot different, so we just got to take it in stride. Taking it in stride would seem to be virtually impossible. This was an undefeated Nebraska team, number one in the BCS rankings. But that was before the Buffs ran roughshod over the nation's sixth-ranked defense to leave the Huskers at 11-1 and out of the Rose Bowl. But if Solich gets his way, not out of the BCS bowl picture completely. I don't think there's any question at 11-1, we ought to be looked at uh, very seriously. I think we still had a great season. I, um, it, it, it sucks that, you know, the national title run is over and everything, but at the same time, we just got to bounce back off of this loss. In Colorado, it knows when it plays next, a week from today in the Big 12 Championship in Dallas. We've talked about getting to this championship game since last July, and so I knew it was important to them, and I knew they'd play hard. You have plenty left for the championship. Oh, we have plenty left. You know, we're ready. We're going to celebrate this one tonight, and then we're going to get prepared for Oklahoma. Congratulations. I got Thank one you. more thing to say. Damn. For everybody who doubted us, who did not pick us, we're going to Dallas. We're going to see Oklahoma in Dallas. Graham may be jumping the gun on naming his championship opponent, but as he and the Buffaloes know all too well, that happens. In Boulder, Steve Cyphers, ESPN. And we Kirk all, says we Daniel's all, not jumping again. We all believe. Yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, weren't, you were not among the doubters. Uh, we, I thought it would be a tight game. This could have big-time implications, though, in the Big 12 BCS Bowl. Obviously, if Oklahoma beats Colorado, they're going to get that uh, Rose Bowl. Well, not obviously, but they're going to get to a BCS Bowl game. That means that uh, Texas or Nebraska get left out. If Colorado pulls the upset, two of those three teams, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas, are going to get left out of BCS Bowls. No way. It's going to happen. It can't be. Let it's me tell you be. something. I, of all the games and I, we've seen, the Big 12 this year, to me, has taken over for the SEC as the best conference from the top to the bottom. And if I was a BCS Bowl director, I would take Nebraska. And I'll tell you why. Nebraska takes thousands. I mean thousands. I mean thousands of people and puts them in a seat and they spend money when they get there. I'd take Nebraska, the BCS. As good as the Big 12 has been this year, and they are terrific, the SEC's taken a little bit of a dip. I think the Pac-10 still has a strong argument for being considered the best conference this year in college football. As far as the argument about the Big 12 and who will be the other team, assuming Oklahoma and Colorado play in this Big 12 championship game, who will be the, the team on the outside? I think it's going to be Nebraska on the outside because Texas is the X factor. Texas 10 and 1 is very attractive to the BCS. Very similar to Nebraska, but what's different is Texas hasn't been to the big dance. They have not been to the BCS. So 10 and 1, great history. They turn on the TV sets and they bring thousands and thousands of people and they spend lots of money at Texas. <laughs> they okay. do. They bring big wallets. They bring big wallets. And they're going to bring it to Bourbon Street, I just get the feeling. Oh, but but could be. you got Cotton and Holiday, two bowl games doing it. Very, very high quality oh, yeah. Big 12 Look teams out of this. Look at oh, man, we'll kill them. Washington. Yep. That's right. Colorado, the only Big 12 team Bob Soups hasn't beaten. Just file that away. Yes, keep it in mind. Steve Bellisari, not likely to play as Buckeyes take on Michigan and Notre Dame take it on Stanford. Must win for Bob Davey and the Irish in Palo Alto this evening.